Well, 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 audience. Look like you showed up again. Welcome to Generic Fantasy Adventure, a D&D 5e adventure series. This is the second season, 13th episode. I'm joined by the cast. They are the characters. They're also the heroes. I believe we left off with a divine divination that has set you on the path to go save a certain uh, mother trapped inside of a cage inside the mansion of an archmage outside of the capital of a certain empire that you are currently traveling through but hundreds of miles away from. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to right. make that as confusing as possible, but it is technically a recap. So yes. the pieces are in place. You are discussing a plan, a plan that may involve treason or sedition against the Empire. You also know that you've got uh, Dr. Lansky and his party. They have said that they'll make themselves available to you. Uh, you haven't technically asked them to do anything yet. And you are also got Rython and the rest of the elves. They are meeting with Imperial officials to decide their fate and how they might get the dragon hold. Uh, last time I checked, you guys might be at a hot springs making your plan. Is that where we left off? I think we did go to hot springs, but I think maybe we're going to talk about sedition. We should do it. It was a bathhouse. Bath bath yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's just too much anime lately. In private it's right in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> I said hot springs, but I meant bathhouse. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize to all of Finland, Norway, and Sweden. Uh... <laughs> I believe we also got a message from Dragonhold that was kind of vague. Well, we got a message from Rython that was went on and on and on and on and on and on. And just as it was about to get to the point, he ran out of words. <laughs> you get the rest tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, he's in the same town as you. You could just go walk yeah. over and yeah. ask. Oh, yeah. That's what I would do. Uh, one day I, want to, I, want, I, want, I want to get a sending send message. It's like, hello, is this thing on? Can, can you hear me? <laughs> You want to do those old Sprint commercials? Can you hear me now? Uh, nope. No, let's not. Let's what? not. It's an old Entish, so it's just the greeting part. <laughs> you meet up with Rython. The elves are... <clears throat> they are uh, camped, I guess is probably the best description, outside of this particular city of Iswa, which again, has no walls. Um, you did purchase goods at the Trapper Camp, and uh, with that, they have the rough basics needed in order to survive. And of course, they're elves, they're trained with weaponry, they're pretty good at self-sufficiency to some extent, but it's been rough physically and psychologically, emotionally, spiritually for them. Um, surrounding the camp are foot patrols, not not like prison guards, but like defense patrols sent by Ice Wall to protect the elves, right? They're in discussions for some sort of asylum agreement or perhaps an alliance. The city doesn't want anyone accidentally wandering into the camp because they don't know what's going on with the elves and they don't want the elves wandering away. So for everyone's safety, it's being foot patrols and then like one... Uh, like cavalry patrol of officers is making their way through the camp as needed to just answer questions and bring, you know, if someone's like, hey, we don't have any food, we'd like to buy food from the Empire, the officers are handling that. As you enter into the camp, seeing that you are a member of this particular community, the guards let you pass. Uh, Rython is... He somehow found, despite the fact there are no trees in any direction around Ice mm -hmm. Wall, he's managed to find a large tree stump to drape himself dramatically on. Imported? He, uh, no, it appears to be fully <laughs> natural. He is lying on his back looking at um, one of those skies with, like, light cloud cover, but just enough gray in the sky to make it seem like not like it's going to rain, but just enough to be like, ah, I'm depressed. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's trying to write upwardly, and the ink is just dribbling back down onto him. And, you know, he's like, this makes me even more sad. If only I had my fainting couch through which my body was physically fit, 
perfectly into. And my writing tablet. Ah, Gwynheria, I see you have arrived. My apologies, I have soiled my traveling clothes with ink. It becomes you. Don't worry. It it speaks to the... I feel as if you have just you make. direly insulted me. No. I'll let it pass. It is a, it is a sign of hard, of hard work. Are you about to tell me some bullshit that it will build character? <laughs> I'm no. hundreds of years older than you and have been fully running an elven society. You sent a message, and these devices, these sending stones, they're certainly incapable of capturing uh, all that must be shared. So I came Wow, you fully, completely lost. Roboted. You're going to have yeah. to do that line again. What? Did I cut out? Yeah. Oh, no! Oh. Ah, oh, these, uh, one. these sad devices, these sending stones, they are incapable of capturing true elven wonder. Uh, you were sending a message, but it cannot convey the depth of your wisdom, unfortunately. But I'm here, and you have news to share? Indeed, I do have news to share. Allow me to say this. The Empire will allow us transit through their lands via the use of one of their teleportation circles. Ooh. We must travel some time to the south and west of here. My understanding is that the Imperial Defense Network does not allow any teleportation circles at a border city. So we will need to travel to the next closest one, a guard post located some distance inland. And then we will teleport to the south and walk to some place called Orishban. Oh, I understand... Orishban. Yes, that it is a city founded by orcish god killers. Yes. But don't let that deter you. I've been it there. doesn't deter me. Good, good, We're good. We're just good. passing through. Yes. It is very close to home. We shall be at Dragonhold, and I have good news for you. You very see. Well. Tanira, one of my companions, an excellent carpenter. You need a new fainting couch. And I'm yes. sure we could have one created that perfectly fits every single detail of your person. It will be the perfect place for your compositions. I think that stump is pretty perfect for him. My father created that fainting couch for me. Oh, we, we wouldn't want to create something other than what your father has made. He sang directly to the marble of the earth and called it out, shaping it with the song of his voice. You see, Gwyneri, he doesn't need a fainting couch. He's perfectly fine. I do okay. need a fainting couch, but it shall be one crafted by the song wood of my own hands. I All shall right, do my best to enchant the trees around Dragonhold, and then I shall have them shape the couch for me will be a lengthy process of over a hundred years of hard work. Ah, I'm your pittance. If anyone can do it and accomplish it perfectly, it is you, right, Bone. And just I, think how good that first faint will be after all that work. I appreciate your confidence in me, and yes, I can already imagine the moroseness with which I sink down into the soft wood, perfectly lacquered by the natural juices of the tree. <laughs> I'm just going to walk away a little bit. What's wrong? You don't like tree juice? Around here, we call that syrup. <laughs> mm, tree juice. Godric says nothing, but me, the player, is screaming inside. <laughs> Would you like to continue to escort us? I understand that uh, the teleportation circles can take you to many locations within the Empire for a small fee. We are, of course, very grateful to the Emperor for allowing us to pass through his lands. It seems that there is much busyness about the Empire. Many rumors are afloat, and the guards all act with 
the normal paranoia of the humans, their haste, and uh, mm -hmm. but but to some extent, it is more than just that. But there are many issues that have come up in the Empire, uh, most notably the Imperial script that's been. Yes. I have heard that they would chop down trees and then press them into sheets of paper for the use of currency, which is easily lost, torn, or burned, when perfectly Amen. good metal is readily available literally everywhere from the earth. They would rather harm living things, extending the cruelty of the human axe. When he says this, he is specifically not looking at a specific party member whose axe specifically is made to destroy trees. <laughs> a good coin should have feel, weight, gravitas to it, yes. Um, but this has created quite the disruption. So the sooner we can move through the land, you know, the empire and get to Dragonhold, the more beneficial it is for all of us. And yes, we will accompany you for ourselves, and we may part ways for a short time. Um, there is a... Where does your business take you? To find my mother, of course. I would not leave her abandoned. I see. So you suspect that you can use the teleportation circles to get closer to whichever dragon encampment she has been taken to? Ah, well, that is the thing. According to the information we've been able to obtain, it isn't a dragon encampment at all. He sits up from the stump and says, not a dragon encampment at all. No. Are you saying someone has control of these dragons? It's Let's quite see. possible that someone is in league with them. I don't know about Let's control, see. but certainly an ally. Um... Unless the Archmage is a dragon. As it turns say, out... The Archmage? The Imperial yes. Archmage? Yes. The one whose teleportation network we are about to use. Possibly. Yes, that's why we need to get you to Orishban safely. Perhaps, but I wonder now if it is safe for us to pass through this empire at all. I must call a meeting of the Elvish people and we will have to rediscuss our agreement with the empire. The Do Archmage any... is an enemy of our people, and in line with these dragons, this could be a trap. Man's got a point Possibly. for this. <laughs> Possibly. Do keep the conversation all in Elven. Do not let the humans know any of this. I mean, to suddenly change plans would imply that you've learned something, which could yes. create more suspicion. Perhaps, but we will have to speak with the elven people, whether we knowingly walk <laughs> into what could be a trap or whether we simply leave. Well, if we decline the offer, you can always say that suffering brings about cleansing. And we after... are the sovereign elven people. We do not need to explain ourselves to a human empire. Yes, but sometimes you have to create a story in order to have them nod and feel confused, not understand, and then forget everything that is going right. on, and they turn their gaze elsewhere. I'm extremely how... skilled at telling people stories that leave them confused. I wonder how many it's, wars yes. have started because one civilization felt no need to explain themselves to another. Mm. Oh, damn, James. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's just like, there have been no wars among the elves since the end of the dragon conflicts. We are a peaceful people. Yeah, but, but you can't guarantee that your neighbor is as well. He looks shocked and scandalized at the idea that anyone would make war against the superior <laughs> elven people in their time of need. Who says they need to make make war against them? They could just use the teleportation network and teleport everyone into a giant meat grinder or sacrificial pit or wherever they want to take them. Are you saying this to him? I'm saying it out loud. Okay, yeah, this is fucking I'm horrifying to him. I mean, yeah. <laughs> be clear. I mean, like, I want to be clear. clear. These are people that literally have not had a war for their entire yeah. lives. Like, yeah. 
their their grandfathers were the ones that fought the dragons like these people have no concept of having conflict with other nations so you're like hey, you could teleport them into a meat grinder and then this guy's just imagining elves <laughs> falling james bond intro movie style into a meat grinder and dying instantly yeah. it's not good for him it's bad I, I for a man already specifically with... to imagine like a giant sausage grinder and, and just elves falling into it all right, we just need someone to make like two lines in Tolkien Elvish for a Bond movie intro song. <laughs> Shouldn't be too hard. I mean, the the point I want to make to him is like, uh, you're, you're the Empire has offered you the use of their teleportation network, but you have no guarantee that they're going to teleport you where they say they're going to teleport you. Oh. Uh... Are we sure that we cannot trust the Emperor, who has given us our word? His word. So you was can't it, press him to do what? Was it the Emperor himself that rolled up here and and gave you his word? or was He it sent word to us can... through magical sending. Give us his blessings and permission. It involved a crystal ball. It was, you know, it was pretty sophisticated for human magic. Could we use our own magic to guarantee that the destination is correct? And not, say, I don't know, the city of brass and some other infernal plane? Rython is waiting for an answer. I mean, he doesn't know. Oh. I mean, you ask, but... I'm asking you, Rython. Rython's you just like, know. I have no I idea. You are a more powerful spellcaster than I. I am skilled with the sword and bow. I am no, no do, mage. Do we need to make arcana checks? You do. I mean, yeah, you could make an arcana. <laughs> or you could look at your spell list. Well, I could try and manipulate the dimension door. Do you have to check to... magic? Yes, I do. Well, Godric, I have good and bad news for you. The good news is that if you had the detect magic spell or were an arcane spellcaster in any way, you might be able to tell something about the teleportation circle. Unfortunately, you just you you're like someone who can read a book but can't cast magic from the book. You're a Harry Potter muggle. My apologies for that <laughs> incredibly harsh oh. language. Uh, uh, you can't use that word. What do you, it's our word. <laughs> mm. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. I, I believe that I could use various magics then to see that the portal is directed properly. I mean, if it opens correctly, we should be able to not see through to Orishbon. And since we've been there, we should know. So is the we plan then that it. we go to this guard post and then leave if we think it's a trap? After being in the room where the magic happens? The room where it happens? If yes. we go to this guard post and something is not right, we can simply state that we... that I could use magic to... Interfere, shut it down, make it look like something went wrong, and oh, something is wrong with your portal. Oh no, I guess we'll have to just travel to the next city and take the next portal. That is our excuse. It'll be fine. Um, I want to chime in. I think, uh, I think God Godric chimes in. Rython, you seem you seem like you have a good handle on on words. Um, can you not just make up some reason as to why you can't use? their portal if it looks if it looks off like oh wait this isn't like gluten free magic so we can't take it what you just said was deeply insulting but i understand the nature with which you were saying it you apparently believe that we elves are somewhat prissy or elitist but yes, if necessary, I could attempt to deceive our potential captors if we arrive there. My my apologies. It was not my intention to make you feel uh, insulted. 
but but the appreciate. point the point I was trying to get across still it's made, fine. Uh, it's not made. that you're directly insulting not only me but the entire Elven community. I will take these plans to the community and see what our people have to say about all of this. Mm -hmm. It may be a long night of discussion for a tired folk to hear that we may walk into a trap and do so willingly anyway. From what well, we know, if we know it's a trap. From what we know, they don't know that we know that they know. You know? No. I didn't follow that. But I will spend the next decade piecing together that logic. Oh, sure, you hey. can mull it over when you get your lounging chair. Mm. The fainting couch. That too. Uh, Godric, uh, uh, as spiritual leader of the Elven populace, I, I do forgive you for any transgression that you may have made. It is it is all well and good. I, I appreciate that. I genuinely did not mean to insult your people. I know that. We're friends. I understand. It's okay. Thought it was pretty good. Well, your boy Rython leaves to kick things off. <laughs> Like a low key, hold out a hand for a fist bump from Chanira. Good luck with your chair. I'm so glad that Fire is back live. Can we, we're getting the memes in chat. Yes. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, should we go back to our planning or? <laughs> well, uh, we do need to decide if we are bringing uh, the good doctor and his crew on board with us. Uh, what is their reward? What is their motivation? I'm sure they're not going to do it just for the fun of a um, caper. I mean, once again, I'm a bit concerned about the whole idea that we, what we, we, I mean, we, we know our reasons for doing what we're doing, but other people don't. Mm -hmm. And it looks a certain way to other people, you know. It looks like a a political move, which is obviously not. But they mm -hmm. they may see it that way, and they may okay. feel compelled by whatever good they serve to to not be involved, or at worst, to turn us in. So, mm -hmm. I'm afraid of that last one. Yeah. Yes. The more people involved, the more complexity we get. Well. In order to accomplish this, we need to, I mean, it is the abode uh, of uh, high mage. I can uh, expect a great deal of defensive magic, spells to detect things, to create alarms, um, portals yeah. being sealed. How do we manage to get to this room on the second floor, unlock the cage, and then extricate? I, well, so, I mean, there's the two, the two things we need, an entry strategy and exit strategy. And the entry yes. strategy has got to come first. So we either go in by, by, by stealth, by force, or by subterfuge. Entrance strategy, fist. Exit strategy, legs. So that's one uh, go for force, it sounds like. That's what I got. I would prefer subterfuge myself. Yeah. Okay, so we're not sneaking in. We are we are finding a way to get in. We are finding a way to get inside, invited, but through deception. Yeah, I can back subterfuge. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. I mean, if we hire Doctor Lansky and crew, if we like a contract, <clears throat> my internet connection is unstable. What? Hold on. Or we could then send them in sneaky like, and then we come in behind, not sneaky like. I mean, the point is, we don't have to all go in the same way as well. No. That's what I'm saying. They go I mean, in you know, a different way than when we go in. Well, I mean, so even us, like, like the, the the five of us, don't have to go in the same way. Yes. No, yeah, we, we we could stop. We could we have some people can stick can subterfuge in. Others create a distraction, and while the distraction is going on, the people that are inside the building from subterfuge can quickly go and do what they need to do. That those sort of things. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What I just said, but better. I do have my own disguise kit. I don't use it very often, but with Mansky's help, it could prove 
valuable to get me inside. Now, if we take an assigned path through subterfuge to get in, we get around any of the potential for alarms and magic. I mean, a high mage, what could be patrolling those grounds? In How much do you know about the, the Archmage in terms of things like um, what I, I don't even know if it's a he or a she, to be honest. Um, uh, like, do we know anything about what they want? Like what sort of people would come to their home? Incredible. We actually did very briefly at the end of the first episode of season two see a scene with the Archmage in it, uh, but I recognized that that was about four to five months ago for us. And, and, and it, was yes. not a play, it wasn't a play of his also either. Correct. Yeah. So, so I'm saying Kithrix doesn't know the gender. Yes. Of, I, know, I, know, I know it's a male Archmage, but it's a, it's no, a, it's a yeah. female Archmage. Was it? I thought it was a male one. Okay. No. Oh, no. Female Archmage. She had an encounter with uh, Lord Orthalax. Why don't uh, whoever wants to can make a history check? Dibs not. Very well. Thirteen, Godric. Okay. Uh, you don't know the name of the Archmage. You do know that she is quite aged. She may actually be older than you. She is human, but she appears to have extended her lifespan to some degree. Uh, she served this emperor, obviously, the emperor's father and that emperor's mother. Uh, so she's served three generations of, of the uh, crown and empire so far. To some extent, she is um, it's like a strategic nuclear weapon. You know what I mean? Like, attacking the empire would require you to go up against her and then like just the idea of messing with the empire has been driven out of your clan's head for that specific region not you know like the dwarves could be like ah let's raid these lands or something you know or let's start a trade mm -hmm. war with them but the idea of going up against the archmage is a lose-lose situation probably your clan, given how big it is, could deal a huge amount of damage to the Empire, no matter what the format of war. But a upset Archmage showing up on your front door and blowing up your mountain would also be quite bad for you. Right. Uh, Guinira, you think her name is like Janine or Geneve or John or something like that. Uh, she has a young son she's uh basically helped raise the emperor after his father died um she's fairly popular within the empire mm -hmm. uh as a sort of like matronly dignified almost like a queen mother feeling um she doesn't have a lot of political power like she doesn't show up to council meetings she isn't like a noble in charge of things she does, however, lead uh, the Association of Wizards who train the Wizarding Towers throughout the Empire. Um, so she's basically the boss of every Wizard Tower. But sure. she maintains some level of distance to the public, but she remains a popular figure because when she shows up, she's like, Gandalf magic, fireworks, dragons, popcorn appears randomly flowers fly everywhere sort of deal like she maintains her popularity by doing cool magical shit anytime she shows up hmm. there are rumors that she has been studying dark magic to extend her life nothing substantial nothing that can be proven but it is noted that she has lived for much longer than a normal human good uh, and undoubtedly magic is a part of that whether it's necromancy or something else, no one can say because no one has the access to ask her. Tanira, there's an archmage in the Empire. <laughs> that is a thing that exists for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I want to throw an ultimate plan out, by the way, just for consideration. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I think that, so we're not, we're not trying to kill the archmage. We're not trying to sit, rob anything else. We're just trying to get your mother out, right? Yes. So there is... The political angle. I mean, your mother is a significant figure within the Elven community. If the Archmage, as a servant of the Emperor, has done this, this is potentially upwards of, a, of an act of war to, mm. to um, imprison for no reason a member of a similarity of another race. Like, we could potentially. Um, so, what I'm thinking is we could potentially go to the house, 
stake it out, have Rython make the claim that he has evidence that um, that your mother has been taken. Presumably, if they don't want to be caught with a um, you know an Elba dinner in the house, we'll need to move her. And rather than trying to get into the house, we try to to get Ooh. her when they bring her out. Intercept on the road, I don't like. Rython can mention. I mean, how is Rython going to be with a little bit of subterfuge, a little bit of deception, a little bit of uh, not being so dramatic and not having so many words? But well, I, I, I almost, I almost feel that drama is what this situation needs. Mm. Okay. James making like an executive idea. decision to distribute personnel where they are most effective. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, what will happen at first? So the, so the Empire will deny it. Uh, I mean, so all, all I'm going to say is divine, divine, yeah, he's received the divine vision that she is being held in this house, in this room, and that, you know, the, the elven race won't be appeased until he's taken there and shown that, you know, she is not mm -hmm. you know, in this house. I mean, we obviously had to get Rython and and the people's um, say uh, like buy on this, but you know, we've had we've had divine guidance that this is the case. Like, I, I don't I don't feel that the the, the the facts are in question. It's just the next steps. Also, we're going to a mage tower, so what's to say they won't use magic to try to get her out to where we can't even view it? It's got to well, be some I mean, high level magic there. They they do control the uh, the teleportation network, as Rython said. Mm. But then this circles all the way back to if he makes this demand, that means he can't use the teleportation magic because if they then go ahead and do that, guess what happens? City of Brass. Suffocating all cubes. Teleportation circle and yeah. plane shift are two extremely different spells. I'm being dramatic. But yes, it's a, I yes. understand. I just want to make yes. sure that everyone understands that, like, uh -huh. there's no way to, like, make a teleportation circle that is secretly a plane shift spell without mm -hmm. someone just being like, yep, that's a plane shift spell for sure. I'm going to step in that circle and I'm going to get, <laughs> like, that's a trap. Um, you can trap. definitely see such a thing. No, don't act bar me. Don't do it, guys. Don't do it. <laughs> I mean, critical critical role is established that you can't see the other side of a tree stride spell because they fall out of the tree that's uh, off the edge of a mountain in the show. Let's not use <laughs> critical roles animated show for what's canon in this generic <laughs> fantasy adventure. Critical role has a very specifically established canon. This canon is generic, James. It's a fantasy adventure. That is generic. I feel like every time we say those words, just like the title drop on screen, just over and over. <laughs> it's like a little ad that swipes in and swipes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A thought, then. I mean, it's a formidable, formidable force of elves, despite their, despite the situation for my people. Um, you know, well armed and well trained. They don't really want them hanging around the empire. I don't think there'll be any sort of. I don't think there'll be any deception. I think they would want them out of the empire as fast as possible. And I don't think they would teleport them into, you know, a, a ring at the other side. You know, where it's over a volcano or anything like that. Uh, do we get the people through? Then have Rython make his request and see what the result is. As much as I would hate to go in with Kaz Bricker, I think we should do twofold. One political and one kind of sneaking to see if they like try to get mm -hmm. her out. If we do this when the Archmage is in the capital and not on the estate, it will be a lot easier. Also true. But they might turn us away if we're asking mm -hmm. specifically for them and they're not there. Mm hmm Graython could just um, ask for answers as to why the why there was a false hydra in his in his town that had the archmage's seal on its butt. Mm. Also that. 
butt seals. That's our end. I don't think we can trust worst, this worst case scenario, they, they accuse the Empire of an act of war. The Empire says, yes, we are at war, and all your people are now in our lands. Um, it going to be a short war. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, for humans. Oh! Rip. Cool. Oh, so nice. Listen to this elven supremacist here. <laughs> or humans. You're not locked in here. You're locked in here with us. Exactly. Okay. I, I think that the first priority is to get the people to Orishbon and on the road south. There is there is one opinion we haven't counted, um, checked on yet as well. What do you think, Sparky? Sparky has been listening nearby, and Sparky is just like, I'm hearing a lot of plans, but I'm having trouble seeing what would be the heroic course of action. I think that the politics of the situation are above me. Traditional draconic negotiations involve a lot of shouting and violence. Uh, and then one side will, like, injure the other side or, like, claw one of their eyes out or steal one of their eggs. Um, that's typically how you get things done. This is a little I mean, complicated for me. Why, why are we including the elves but not including Lansky, who, I'm going to be honest, I don't like but seems infinitely more capable than Rython? Because we don't, because no. the only difference is that Rython is invested in the return of Guineri's mother to the point that he would be anti empire if it were not achieved. Lansky, we don't know. Like he, his group, they could be that they, they could turn on us the moment we ask them to be involved in something like this. He sighs and deeply Lansky because he has no skin in the game. Yeah, this is more politics and intrigue, which yeah. is definitely not his uh, his forte. But to go back to your earlier question, the heroic option would definitely be that we go in and we get her out, and we do it in such a way that they can have no recourse on us because to accuse us of the crime would be to admit to the crime themselves of having captured her in the first place. Hmm. I see. Not you I've been listening in on some of the things you've been saying over the past few hours. You you trust this god of knowledge then that they are yes. not lying to you? Very well. I can vaguely recall a time before such a being existed. So it's hard to say that they are deific to me compared to the Supreme Creator, but very well. You you briefly mentioned that you believe that the Emperor might be a dragon and be involved in all of this, that the Emperor is behind everything that sort of discussion has kind of fallen off now. There's a lot of talk about the Archmage this, I don't want to say this episode, in the last few minutes. <laughs> accusations against the Emperor have dissipated. I, only in so far as the Archmage and that house are our targeted area i mean we can we can assume that everybody that is not us is a dragon if we want to um but we've got to focus on the problem right in front of us right now are we not rangers can we not sense dragons i'm pretty sure did you give up primeval sense or whatever <laughs> um most of that was in so. character that last part was out yeah. of character i'm yeah. pretty sure you yeah. can sense dragons automatically as a dragon ranger you know, I, don't like I, a, I, don't think, I don't think I have that in any particular way. Wow. This guy's over here talking about critical role setting standards. Laura Bailey going, ah, dragons. Yeah. <clears throat> Are you really a ranger if you can't detect evil dragons <laughs> with your brain? 
Yeah, well, apparently right. not. Uh, He's also got like a passive perception of like a 400. So he can just like <laughs> sit on top of someone's house and point out all the evil dragons. Yeah. That's not how that works, but okay. <laughs> I wonder if we are making a lot of plans with some assumptions in haste. We mm -hmm. have resources to ask those very same gods questions that may help direct us to give us more information or to help us divine our path. I don't know how you want to approach this. You all seem very keen to approach it with politics and... I don't know how to do that. My thoughts are that we should respond with immediate and incredible swift violence. I'm with that. When someone attacks your family, you should respond accordingly so that they understand never to come after your, your family again. That may not be the most heroic thing to do, but I am the first heroic dragon, so I don't have a lot of role models kind of just making it up as i go you know he looks I mean, unusually the example he seems to be picking up some of rython's mannerisms he looks unusually oh, sad no. and contemplative right now you know he's going through his teenager phase mm. he's growing his, his scales are growing his body's getting longer and bigger um awkward yeah awkward Clumsy. He's losing access to his insubstantial powers as it becomes more real. It's a rough time. I want to I want to point out to him, or Godric's going to say to him that, uh, you know, you as the first heroic dragon, you're setting the example, so you need to to lead and act how you want future generations of heroic dragon to act. Violent. I would gladly rain down lightning on this house and tear it asunder. If I had such means, but I do not. Can we acquire such means of deterrence? Is there some uh, force that can match the Archmage? I don't know where that force would be. I don't know how to hire it or compel it. How um how powerful is your mother? I mean, is it possible that the reason that she's locked away is because she does pose that sort of equal threat? Yes, but your mother is a legendary warlock. Mm -hmm. That said, she's a legendary celestial warlock, so not mm -hmm. exactly a combat no. threat. No, but she does have access to knowledge and secrets and powers and placed in a cage that probably nullifies any magic that she might have. Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, get, getting getting in and getting to her might be the entirety of the plan because once we've got her, getting out is no longer a big issue. True. True. Okay, okay I'd like to right get... That, well, that, uh, no, I think that'd be out of character knowledge. I, I'm not going to say that. But what were you going to say out of character, out of character? Uh, I was going to say that depends on if her, if she's a warlock, that depends on if she, her, her patrons betrayed her or not. Mm. If, her, if her patron's given up on her, then she wouldn't have the power to get us out anymore, would she? That's actually not how warlocks work, interestingly enough. That's how clerics work, but not warlocks. Yeah, I know uh, warlocks keep their their power. They keep their magic when they're con contractual. Yeah, but... Their deal with their warlock uh, patron is a one time thing. Once given, it can't be returned. Unlike clerics, mm -hmm. who if they repeatedly ignore dreams, visions, or instructions, uh, can lose their powers. Not that anyone here has repeatedly ignored dreams, visions, or instructions. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, AP. I, I had primeval awareness, but it, I swapped it for primal awareness as a drop from the class <laughs> feature. Oh. Does, yeah. does that take away your ability to be dragons? Yeah, I, I, I don't have the prim primeval awareness trait because of it. It's, a, it's an option. It's a, it's a replacement is, class what feature. What does primal awareness give you? It, it, it's how I can do things like um, be sense and speak with animals at will. Ah, uh, I see. So, I yeah, see. Yeah. 
Well, well, well. Which has been helpful in its own way, calming those elephants down. And talking to the horses. Sure. I think the first plan is to head towards the estate. That has to be it. We have to go in that direction. We have to survey it. We have to see what we're up against. All right. Do we want to bring Lansky and his group with us just in case? Um, let me let me throw this at, at you guys. Um, Lansky's group feels a little bit more, I want to say, like subtle or maybe stealth inclined. Do we want to hire them to, to case the joint first? Not... Not necessarily do anything too invasive, but just just scout it out and give us some intel. Can I just be clear? Lansky is a bit more self inclined. Otherwise, he's got a a murderous sniper, a a, a warrior who wants to challenge everybody. Um, okay, I don't know that uh, that I would call the whole group subtle. Yeah, but like an angry fisherman on someone's property is a lot less. Uh... Uh-huh. A lot less, sure. a, a lot more subtle than like yeah. uh, a smoking dwarf. Somewhere, yeah. Tad sneezes. <laughs> but Lansky <laughs> does get, yeah, he knows he knows his team's strength, so I'm sure he'll deploy them effectively. Not only that, apparently he's a master planner. Yeah, he already, knew that he already knows we're coming to him to ask. Tad's are mocking him. He's a mastermind rogue. Making elaborate plans is part of his character's class. <laughs> Stop trolling, Lansky. <laughs> <laughs> so much no fun. we love it it's so, it's so good sorry i always feel like we need we need that scene from the dnd movie about making plans i haven't seen the dnd <laughs> movie don't spoil me <laughs> okay <laughs> so it sounds like we have a plan to not have a plan to make a plan so that we have a plan all right so i think i think quinaria is right we need to set off we need to start going that way i think we need to bring lansky with us and we need to read his group into this on the way there yeah. You're gonna go and meet Lansky's group right now. Sure. We yeah. can hear the senior not want to come. What? No, I'll, I'll go. Okay. Yeah, we get Probably because you, you tend to pick fights with them. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna miss an opportunity to jab them. That's what I just said. Yeah, that's what I was repeating. You were just saying. I think, I think during the conversation, Tanira just randomly takes one of them out silently. The four of them nah. are walking towards you down the ice wall streets. Uh, Tad, Virginia, and Dr. Lansky all have new outfits on, and it's clear mm-hmm. that they've just hit the fourth level. Uh, each of them now has a feat. Uh, their hit points have improved. Um... They're doing yeah, the they're, slow they're, they're, they're mo walk. Point, yeah. 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 Um, Lansky's got an even. He's he still got his cloak, right, and his jacket with the hood up. But now his hat is even larger, and it's got a cuckoo clock built into it. Um, nice. uh, Tad now has uh, a strap of like weapons, like mace, uh, long sword, short sword. He's got like a glaive on his back now to go next to his harpoon. It's clear that he's now like getting a weapon for every situation with like bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Uh, short and long range. And um, Akanja has a little spider robot that just sits on her shoulder. I gotta tell you, I was once running a D&D game where the party killed 17 people that all had plus one long swords. And one of the players like, I take all the plus one long swords. I said, you can't carry that many long swords. So he drew a picture of where every sword was stored on his body. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the Kobu incident of D&D, yeah. Um, Dr. Lansky does a profile turn, adjusts his hat and puts one hand over the other on his cane and says, I thought we might see you again. Of course. You. Do you have the time? He <laughs> removes his hat <laughs> and he presses the cuckoo bird in and it comes out and it says, the current time is 11 a.m. 11 a.m. And right at that moment, you hear the church bells ring 11 times. Mm-hmm. Uncannily accurate, my good woman, <clears throat> as he puts the hat back on. Much lighter than a water clock too. 
Much lighter than a water clock. And more portable than a sundial. <laughs> um, so we have found our way into another mission outside of town. Actually, quite. A, what's the distance we're talking about to the Archmage's home again? Um, uh, like, to the so, arc, like to the yeah. Archmage's home is like yeah. over a thousand miles. Oh, so, okay. So it's still to the, the guard story. post that has a teleportation circle, which could conceivably take you to the capital. Yeah, like thirty That's... to forty miles. It's a yeah. it's okay. a two day military march. Okay. So we're planning to separate from the elves. Um, they have made arrangements to attempt to use the teleportation network to get back to our home. We are pursuing a different angle that we would like to discuss hiring you on, but it's something we've got to talk about in discrete terms. He says very well, and as he swishes his cloak, it covers the camera, and as the swish comes down, the... Ten of you, including Spiderbot and Sparky, are seated around a large table in a smoking corner of a tavern in Icewall. Uh, and Lansky hands two silver coins to the waitress and says, See to it that we are not disturbed. Very well. You must be thinking of hiring us for a job if you are summoning us with such subterfuge now while this is happening tad has like two huge beer steins and is trying to drown himself in one of them until he can't drink anymore because he needs to get oxygen and then breathe for a second before continuing down but i just wanted to make sure you understood that at least one person at the table was trying to be professional i also down my beer at the same time very well <laughs> Dr. Lansky, as you know, we come from a place called Dragonhold, and we are mission uh, mandate so far is, is we are battling evil dragons. We've already defeated one. We're looking for rumors on information on others. And unfortunately, something that we've come across in our travels is evidence that implies that some evil dragons have some sort of so, uh, hidden political influence inside the the empire. Um, we don't know how how far it goes. It, we believe it has it, it's part of the reason for this uh, currency exchange, transferring of metal currency to paper currency because the dragon is trying to or dragons are trying to amass wealth, which is where their power comes from. We came to the region where we found you originally, looking for. Quinaria's mother, who had disappeared. And we discovered that her village had been attacked by a dragon, and the dragon had left behind a creature that was terrorizing the populace. We defeated it, but on the creature, we found um, the sigil of the Emperor's Archmage. Um, then, while using divination magic to try and locate Quinaria's mother, all signs point to her mother being held by the Imperial Archmage. We're not looking to start a an issue with the Empire until we know more about what the influence of the dragons is, but we are looking to get back our friend's mother. I would like one of the two things to happen. Either one person in this party rolls insight, or all of you roll insight and you have to beat a group roll. Like, half of you will have to succeed. So, first, before we do that, has anybody still got inspiration? Uh, I do not think I have inspiration. No. I think we have a bard, though. I mean, being bardically us inspired yeah, but, is fine. Yeah, yes. but, but the, the, problem, the problem more is that, like, <laughs> it's it's like it's it's a reflexive role, I assume. So, I, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't, I, if I was a gym, I wouldn't be allowing things like bardic inspiration or guidance uh, on a reflexive role. Makes sense. Mm hmm. So I'm a plus six on insight. And I'm not even close to that. I say let James do it. Yes. You okay with that then? Yeah. I'll, I'll just make the roll. Okay. Say. Pass and fail on the honor of I suppose I started the conversation, so. Can I can I give him uh, some kind of guidance? Uh, I'm going to go going to cast kind of magic right in the middle of this oh. conversation. Eight? Okay. No, I, I don't think it's going to matter with the two. 
some yeah. Lansky looks at his other party members, and his other party members are looking at each other and all of you, and something is passing over their faces. Uh, Lansky just continues to listen passively, and I think now is a great time to take our break. Yeah, no, I think okay. I think that uh, yeah, but said it perfectly in chat there. Uh, <laughs> sure. Um, I feel like the last thing that happens is we just see shadows flickering over Doctor Lansky's face as he gets this information, and it makes him look really sinister. But. We'll learn more about the, their company's response in the next five minutes when we return from break. Welcome back to the middle part. You know, at the top of the show, I forgot to mention that my computer has been having some hard drive problems. I blue screened about two weeks ago, and I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But uh, at the end of the night, I usually put my computer in sleep mode. And twice recently, instead of coming out of sleep mode, it has gone to the BIOS boot screen that says, no boot drive has been detected. About 20 minutes before the stove started, <laughs> the hard drives I was going to use to clone my current hard drive arrived from Amazon like 20 hours late, but uh, I didn't think I had time to perform that full operation. So I'm really on borrowed time with tonight's show i'm gonna have to do it tomorrow but um hey if i disappear randomly and the show just cuts out on youtube at some point it's because i've had to move the twitch pods over after a massive collapse of all of my stream stuff fortunately i have a backup from three months ago so i should be okay even in case of a massive collapse we find yeah, ourselves Every, everything goes in the cloud for me well, it must be nice having a corporate cloud <laughs> server to back up to with that kind of space. No, 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 I just use Office 365. Office 365? Do you think I'm some sort of, again, do you think I'm corporate out here? I don't even have open office. I use Notepad, <laughs> my man, or Google. <laughs> oh, damn it. Now I'm going to have to get Office 365. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I buy a new computer, I turn it on and type in my, my username and password, and all my stuff is there. This son of a bitch. Well, I guess I'll have to think about that, because that definitely sounds a lot better than having to reinstall everything by hand, which is my nightmare for the next time <laughs> I move over. When I did it the last time for my shows, I was like, all right, I basically can't broadcast for a week while I get set up again. <laughs> uh, we find ourselves in the same inn, tavern. Um, we see that there are four men drinking together in large glass beer steinish things. They're all slamming their drinks together, saying, prosperity! Um, and seem to be celebrating something. There's like a, a small party that's gotten together that are uh, congratulating a husband and wife who just got married. The camera continues to go into the corner where a half elven woman in like a dark green cloak with like a dark look about her, uh, half in shadow, is saying to two young halfling women, there are many magical talks in this world, Romina Baggins. And none are to be used lightly. Um, the camera continues over to your table where the four members of Lansky's party and the mechanical spider are just all taking a measure of what you've told them. They're not saying anything to each other. Are you are you are you toasting prosperity with the rest of the Imperials? Yeah, not as loud. Okay. Yeah, they they you know, they prosperity you back. <laughs> I'll let the pregnant pause hang in the air. Okay. Lansky says, <clears throat> so to be clear here, what you're saying is you are preparing a job to go up against the Archmage of the Empire. We don't want to come into conflict. We want to get her mother free. Yes. The thing I is see. that her mother is a, is a significant political figure within the elves. So we believe if we can get her out, then it's difficult for the Empire to go us for that because to do so would be to admit that they had imprisoned a high-ranking member of the elves without any communication and and had left a 
I said left evidence of a uh, crime at the at the town where they tried to wipe everybody out. He looks at his other party members and says, "Have you begun planning for this operation?" We wouldn't begin planning without involving you. You're Good. the master planner. Don't plan. More of a on-the-go kind of group. No, don't make any plans at all. Stop thinking about this in any way. That's not going to happen. Do you have the capability to purchase for yourselves amulet of proof against detection and location? I would say specifically Gwyneria should have one. Hmm. Okay. Requires magical attunement to your soul. That's so I'd fine. Feel, I'd feel better if all of you had them, but specifically, Gwyneria should almost certainly have one. Oh, Are any of you known to this Archmage? No. Not well, we don't, we don't know what they know about us because they've obviously taken one of our mothers. Indeed. So You have brought to me quite a problem. You see, any plans which you make the Archmage would be capable of casting a spell to ask what plans is Gwyneria making. You understand this, right? Mm. So, what? whatever plan I make, I can't tell you about. It should also be clear that at any given moment, you may have a magical sensor about you. <laughs> Uh, so he turns to Virginia and Akansha, uh, and kind of nods at them, and, uh, Virginia's eyes kind of go white, and Akansha just starts looking around, um, and he says, The amulet of proof against detection and location will protect you from the scrying magic of the Archmage, should she be looking for either you specifically, or family members of the person she has taken, or people who are looking to go up against her. So allow me to lay out the terms of my contractual agreement here. I will not go up against the Archmage. I will provide you on-site location with a plan for ingress into the Archmage's manse to get you to wherever you need to go. Such a thing could escape the notice of her magic. Sounds like a plan. So just a question though, if the Archmage could scry Gwyneria's plans and realize that Gwyneria is then using your plan, could the Archmage not then scry your plans? Correct, which is why you need to buy the Amulet of Proof against detection and location so she cannot be scryed. All right, where do I find it? I mean, they're relatively cheap. It's just got to, we just got to find one somewhere. Yeah, I think yes. they're like a thousand gold. Oh. I like I like how you're like they're relatively cheap and like their their party is just like looking around like what, what, what money bags over here. <laughs> I need another beer. Yeah, they're uncommon. The conjure goes I... to buy another beer and brings one back for you, but puts it just outside your casual reach. <laughs> I get my own beer. Okay. <laughs> Don't let the beer go to waste. Oh. And you drink Gwineria, it then as I walk away. <laughs> it's, it's, it's your mother, Guineria. It's 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 your call. We need to rescue her. We need to free her. It is cruel to have her cap be a captive and to do nothing. I have the means to pay for amulets. I could purchase. Will we need four or five? I look to where Sparky is. You will need at least one. Well, yes. That's obvious, but should I purchase them for my friends as well? If they are known to be my associates, would that impact things? I'm a contractor, not a consultant. Speaking of which, what would you like? 
from this arrangement. What are you willing to pay for these services? Well, you it's, are it's, diverting it's, us from our return from Esport, but if you have access to the teleportation network, we could certainly use it. Getting to the Imperial Capital would save us a lot of time. Getting to the Imperial Borders near Esport would save us quite a bit more. So I mean, traveling with clear, you is not untoward. Yeah. If you were traveling with us and you weren't doing this for us, we'd still take you to those places. So, um, that's, yes, that's, you, you do know. seem unusually good hearted. Is there a glass that's larger than a conjures? <laughs> yes, yes. She didn't get, she did not get the beer sign. She didn't get the tad and prosperity level. She got a regular mug, a pint. I want the bigger one. Okay. You, you want, yeah. You want the want beer the stein. stein. Yeah. 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 Okay. You get it. You sit down with it. Tad looks impressed. He's still working on his second one. <sighs> All right. The only thing we can get. Um, if, can? Sorry? Oh, well, wonderful. Uh, it's, just, it's, a, it's just money. Oh. Yeah, but he sits um, forward and he says, yes, speaking of money, again, what are our services worth to you? Well, I, I mean, suspect I will need all of my team's eccentric <laughs> and uh, arcane powers in order to access the mines of the Archmage. I, so you, I mean, what's your fee? I mean, it's you tell us what you want and... Well, normally I do missions for drugs or street power or recruitment uh, since none of you have any of those things i suppose money will have to do i will also give you my ring of protection we will do the job for the ring of protection so is this like out of your wheelhouse is what out of my wheelhouse this job my job is to break into a domicile, which is entirely within my wheelhouse. Extricating you from the domicile is not in my wheelhouse, nor is finding prisoners or evading archmages. That is far outside my planning. Your mm -hmm. own we, particular skills will be needed for that. We know where in the house the prisoner is, at least. Oh, very well. Don't tell me mm -hmm. yet. No. You'll have to mm -hmm. tell me at the last possible moment. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Virginia okay. leans in next to him and they have a brief conversation uh, in primordial can you read lips of a primordial variety why do you sound like weird bait <laughs> <laughs> listen I like to go through all of my my, my languages when I'm, when I'm drinking okay mm -hmm. it's the only time people let me without looking at me weird Does anyone speak primordial and want to interfere in this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lansky relaxes back into his seat and says, there doesn't appear to be any scrying around any of us right now. Such a magical sensor would be visible. That doesn't mean you're safe from being divined on, but we are not being watched or recorded in any way right now. And Dr. Lansky, sorry, has he given us his first name? He's not giving you his first no, name. Okay. No, okay. Doctor, clearly. It's doctor, uh, yeah. actually. Um, if, if it's not clear, like, we do want to work with you. I know you, I know you have another mysterious patron, but, um, yeah, we My are, mother, yes. Yes. we are lords of a keep. We are building up a, a network, you know, we, we I, I, I'd rather this not just be a, a business contract contract and we're done. I'd rather we still have ongoing support for one another. Is your mysterious benefactor the Archmage? No, no. we know we know that they're not. No. We know this already. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean I just for chats, I, I mentioned this on Discord, I think, that Lansky is directly based off of Kaz Brecker from Shadow and Bone. I'm making no attempt to hide that. 
His first name is Kaz. His first name is Freddy. Freddy Lansky. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, so look, you've offered to let him go to Dragonhold, and he has no answer for that right now, right? They all live in Esport, and they appear to have some connection to it. But the yeah. offer to base out of... I, I mean, you're essentially the Wild West, right? Like, you're a totally mm -hmm. new settlement. You haven't even been back there since you've recruited hundreds of new people. You don't know what the food or housing situation is like. Um, it's a real... How, how far from Dragonhold is Esport? A, quite a distance. Uh, okay. If you imagine a clock, Dragonhold is at the 6th mark of the Empire, and okay. Esport is more like 8.30. Okay. So, but I mean, we, we don't... It's a, it's we don't a boat trip, them, essentially. We don't need to move the operation to, to Dragonhold. What we want to do is give them, like, sending stones, and we can, you know, if they need help with something, or we need help with something, we can call on each other and find out whether the other mm -hmm. side is available to help, sure. to help the other. It's easily a month's journey, unless you have access to a boat. Okay. On foot. He and his people are clearly going to talk it over when they're not looking at the five of you. Yeah. In All the right. background okay. of this conversation, you see that a female halfling appears on the ground in the middle of a crowd of people who all look shocked. Uh, and someone goes, a magic trick, everyone, a magic trick. Uh, and a half-elven woman roughly picks them up and is speaking condescendingly to them and dragging them out of the bar. They're waving around some sort of flashy uh, torque-based object, like some sort of collar. I suspect some dark riders might appear at the inn tonight. <laughs> oh, they should go to the inn directly trick. across the, the street. All right, let's let's give this let's let's take our leave now. I imagine you want to discuss what we told you more in Indeed. your own time. So, where will we meet uh, up with you next? We just got I mean, here, though. Back back here tomorrow. He holds his hand out for the ring. Yeah, I gave it to him. He hands it to Thad. We have to go find a magic magic item shop. And I'm going to stay and finish my beer. Oh, yes. Yeah, he gives you directions to the magic item shop. Okay. They went in and, you know, like, I feel like Virginia explains that they went in and browsed, but they don't have enough money to buy anything. But they were <laughs> like, ah, oh, you know, I mean, it, we just leveled up. We should really be looking at our options if we had money. So when you say you're going to stay and finish your beer, are you going to, like, just sip it? <laughs> um. I mean, for as long as possible. They all stand up and leave, but in the process, a conscious tail whips out to the beer that is just out of range of you and essentially like hooks onto it. And as she passes you, she drags it in front of you and then releases her tail. Because as mentioned, she is a tiefling. Thanks, love. Uh, she slaps you in the face as she leaves. Just full on backhand, like actual assault could be taken to court for this. I'm gonna throw the beer that she fucking moved at her. Okay. All right. Uh, what? Yeah, I want you to make a opposed athletic check as the two of you just get into a brawling fist fight real quick. Instantaneous. The two hair trigger mavericks of the party. Yeah. What's with these eights, bro? Oh no! Oh boy! Oof, yikes! You almost hit a twenty there. I was pretty worried. Pretty worried. Uh, it's too bad. <laughs> it's too bad both of you suck at this. But by the time somebody pulls the two of you away, you have clearly gotten the better of her, and she's got a nice shiner on her tiefling dark colored skin. Um, uh, she's just incoherently shouting at you in abyssal. You know, like "fuck you," I'm gonna rip you apart. Yeah, that's right. I'm here when you need me. Were you All having right. a slap fight? <laughs> Uh, uh. Well, it was way more brutal than that. It was between a, yeah. a monk and a wizard fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Come back if you want more. Uh, James. Chug yes. that beer. You notice that as this fight has gone on, 
uh, a Kanja's Meccano spider has tucked itself away safely in uh, Tanira's close. Okay. Um, I won't mention it right now. Okay. Fucking twats. All right. Magic um, I, I think probably once, once we leave the bar, I'll mention it to in Sylvan to um, Guineria. Hmm. Yeah, that we've got we've got a we've it's all, we've we've got a we've got a, a tag along. The mechanical spider is in Tanira's robes. Oh, you said it really? in, uh, to her, Sylvan. Yeah. yeah. I, I I don't I don't know what I don't know what Tanira speaks other than other than common. That's pretty much it. I okay, think it infernal maybe. You definitely speak infernal because you're yeah. a thief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't speak infernal. I, I mean, if, uh, if I, if yeah, I, if your I parents spoke it at home when you were a kid. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you're an orphan. Um, yeah. oh, you do you, you do speak Sylvan? Do I? Yeah, you speak common infernal Sylvan orc. Oh, okay. You can understand okay, what so the we're... two of them are saying. So, so I, I don't. You I don't can think speak in draconic. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I've ever heard you speak Sylvan. So I'm saying it to a Guneria like, you know, I, I don't have a way to tilt to Nira, but you know, th this mechanical spider is in her roche. <laughs> Oh, I wonder if it has the ability to relay our conversations, or that, to that at was, least remember them. That was my we concern. Should, we should probably deal with it. Where is it? I I just sort of drop under like drop into the robes. Like some it's somewhere. Oh. Her robes are quite voluminous. Ah, Tanira, I think you should go to the bathhouse and just jump in. I just we just went to the bat and I'm drinking. You you love the bathhouse. I'll go after love. Don't worry. All about right, it. all right. But um, we'll get squeaky clean. Uh, do you feel any loosey goosey love? Loosey goosey. Uh, They'll think twice about him. coming after me again. I'll tell you what. Should we just tell him? We should just tell him. I mean, if it can hear, it's going to hear. Mm. Hold on. This whole conversation is taking place in Sylvan, right? Well, I think that we went back. I think that when um, Guineria spoke to Tanira there, that was in common because we don't yes. know if she can speak Sylvan. Ah, yeah. okay. So I'm yep. speaking common. I just to want say to know if you're walking down the street of an imperial city, an elf and a tiefling speaking magical fey language. <laughs> no, no, I just no. want to know how frightened the local citizen should be. <laughs> In common, I'm telling Tanira, okay. do we probably need the bath? You know, go to the bathhouse and just jump in and you know wash everything. It'd be, it'd be, yeah. Hmm. Um, but at this point, I think that I will stop Tanira, and it's like, okay, give us a spin. We... I'm trying, trying to see where the bulk of the spider might be hiding. Don't worry, she didn't get me. Make a perception she... check. Ooh. Bulk of the spider. Well, you rolled a 25. Yeah, so <laughs> yep. it has tucked away in her collar. It's hanging like upside down in there, barely visible to anyone except those with elven eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eyes. It's like, oh, it's there's a spider it's, on you. It's, it's hands it. of an eyes. Yeah. It's, 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 it's higher than my passive perception. Well done. Mm -hmm. I have a few skills. Um, I, I think that I will extricate said spider from the call. Okay. I need and you to I make just... an athletic check. Okay. Come on. Come on. Oops, um, I clicked the wrong thing and I opened up my files. Athletics. Not my best stat, uh, score, but 15. That's fine. Pretty good. You got what you needed. Yeah. Uh, it tries to flee from your hand like a cat, mm -hmm. but you managed to snatch it. Um, it is attempting to evade your grasp. Okay. Do I see it? Yes. I mean, Cordelia <laughs> solidly has it in her hand. That cheeky bitch. Does it have eyes? It has eyes. It can see me. Mm 
It's like, hello, hello, little Can I crush it? Spa! No, no, no. It's, it's in my hand still. Don't, don't, no, don't. It's, it's their pet. It's not about to be a dead pet. No, let's not make enemies on. Let's just send it back to its master. We know it's here. She knows we found it. Send yes. it back. Cheeky, cheeky. No playing around. And then I go and I put it near a building so it won't get stepped on and let it loose. And then I crush it. It immediately moves directly towards Tanira and tries to crawl up Tanira's close. I'm going to crush it. Okay. <laughs> You're crushing it? <laughs> crushing it. Make an attack roll. Uh, how do I do that again? <laughs> Click on your character token. The upper left-hand corner, uh, you should have your abilities, attacks. Your fish should be an item. Let me see my things. And the inventory should have unarmed strike. Just go up here. Eight again? Come on, that's three eights in a row, dude. <laughs> you hit it and you crush it into the muddy ground. Good. One of its legs twitches briefly and it makes a sort of sighing noise as it dies. There. Well done. Take that. I yell at the spider. <laughs> Does this, does this look like something I could possibly fix? Don't have the fabricate spell. I think it's way outside your level of understanding. Okay. I mean, we're I, coming I was, up I was once gonna... again to where you don't have any ability to cast arcane magic. So I, mean, I, I, I was going to gather it and look for someone who could fabricate it back into into working <laughs> functioning because there, there is no there's no repair cantrips in rather in fifth ed. Uh, there. I mean, there is mending, but it doesn't work on magical objects. With this, yeah. this specifically is. Yeah. Um, I'd say you do know one person who could repair it. Is that the owner? Or yes, that's the owner. Yeah, you would definitely know how to repair it. Um, but you are gathering up the now crushed spider. Yeah, I'll, I'll gather it up. Okay. Put it. Put put the pieces into a bag. Very well. Put the bag in the trash. If it was anyone else, they'd have to roll, but you do find every single last piece. <laughs> this, when she needs to Ikea this thing, she's going to get it back together in the way it's supposed to. Going to fix everything with an Allen wrench. Uh, flat pack robots, nice. <laughs> All right, to the magic shop then. Okay. For a thousand bucks, they'll sell you the amulet. How many do they have? Uh, I'm going to fill my stein before I leave. I feel like they have like uh, <clears throat> 20. Like they have, you've been to magic shops before and you've never seen like a big stockpile of mm -hmm. items. They only have like one or two of any given item. They have a lot of these. Hmm. You know, and they're located like up front, center stage, beneath in a glass counter, beneath the like where the the salesperson is standing. You know, you come in and they're just like, ah, oh, welcome. Oh, I see you're looking at an amulet of uh, proof against detection. And yeah, these are hot sellers. Uh, no one wants their neighbors to be using magic to go in and spy on them or be tracked by any evil entities. Uh, yeah. You know, we're offering them for a thousand, or you can get a four pack for thirty five hundred. Hmm. Protect the may whole family. May I inspect one of them? Sure. Is there yeah. anything in there with like he a takes, soft texture? He takes one out of the case. He does the like jewelry, <laughs> like drapes it, makes it so it looks good, holds it up next to you so you can compare it. Because they're all different. Like they're not like yeah. the exact same. So he like holds it in front of a mirror for you to see like how it would look around your neck essentially, and then he gently hands it to you. It's pretty, pretty finely wrought silver. It definitely has no magical feel to it initially. Like if you looked at this amulet, you wouldn't be like, ah, this person's wearing magic. Um, mm -hmm. uh, all of them are like a simple gemstone on like a silver locket, and then like a, a silver wire chain. Um, mm -hmm. But the like. 
the length of the chains and the patterns in them are different and the gemstones are all different. But uh, hmm. yeah, he hands you a nice uh, ruby one. And he's just like, oh, that's lovely. And you know, when you're buying an item like this, the way that it looks is as important as what it does. He has a point, and I'm just going to go around and like start touching things. Could... Does anyone need anything else while we're here? Um... Can I have a green one? Uh, the clerk is, is a green one? trying to gently move you away from touching all of them, and like it's a nice like jade one out for you, and it's like, ah, look here, this goes absolutely lovely with your complexion. Uh, it's so striking against your skin tone. Flattery and I can tell that these are genuine. Uh, do you have detect magic? I have detect magic and identify. Uh, I mean, identify will will tell you what it is. Detect magic will tell you it's magical. I'm going to use identify. Okay. Uh, are you casting as a spell or are you using the ritual, which will take 10 minutes of standing around chanting? Um, <laughs> I think that I would probably just want to cast it as a spell and okay. the bought components for it specifically. So. Yeah, you quietly cast a spell. The attendant briefly looks over, but you get the idea that this isn't super surprising. Um... What happens is a little Rython, like t tiny little Rython appears on top of it and goes, Hello, I see that you're trying to identify this item. <laughs> this item is an amulet against proof of detection and wards, or whatever the damn thing's called. I've said it so many times. Detect today. Detection and location. Detection and location, yes, thank you. Uh, Keep it on the DL, detection and, and location. Mini Rython just fades away. Hmm. Yes, yes. I, I think four of them for the thirty-five hundred. Uh, but uh, with that, that I have a diamond that I can use to trade for all of these things. But uh, yes, I see. The, the diamond is worth more than thirty-five hundred. So I'm wondering if there are anything else that my friends might want from your shop. Is there anything shiny? When did you hold on? When did you get a diamond worth more than thirty-five hundred gold? When we were way, 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 way in the south, a diamond is 5,000. And so after our shares. You can get 500 gold diamonds, but yes. It's what she wanted to really shine. D &D Beyond, it said it was worth 5,000 <laughs> for a diamond, 1,000 for an emerald. Or I you can, can have. You can specifically buy like diamond dust for 300, but sure. You have I, one I diamond, know. so. Um, you know, the clerk looks at you apologetically when you're paying with a diamond and is just like, we'll have to get an appraiser in here. And of course, we may not be able to offer equivalent value. Uh, any change that we have will need to be an imperial script. Is that all okay? Oh, no, we're just going to spend everything, all of it's worth. Oh, oh very well. What, what else can we get for you today? I don't, that's why I'm asking my friend, is there, are there any uh, additional items? Um, er Arrows? Enchanted arrows? I Can I know. sell you any souvenirs or perhaps clothes? Have you considered a nice I love the Emperor cloak? I want to I want to ask this guy. Um, I want to essentially describe Dr. Lansky's party and then ask what they were looking at. Ooh, good point. <laughs> Dear guest, I appreciate that you appear to be lords and possibly um what's the common terminology robber barons adventurers i understand that you are used to gathering intelligence uh and such from shopkeepers and the like but this store has a very specific policy against revealing such private information we have I mean, I'm, I'm inquiring in the in the idea of a of a gift. Probably not a spider, huh? Can I interest you then in a uh, a sixteen point one emblem? You can have it sewn onto your pants. <laughs> you know, like a bumper sticker saying that you ran a half marathon. Uh, perhaps a... He's more I, of a sprinter. <laughs> I visited Ice Wall over here. Like a nice rug to take home. Uh, I don't think those would be uh, 
I want the I rug. I don't think those are what we're looking right. for. The rug is uh, 50 gold pieces. What? I'll put it on your tab, because you're apparently giving him a $5,000 And this, diamond. and I pick up something random. Okay. <laughs> ah, an interesting choice. Magic frog. In Indeed. So you have handed over, essentially, what is a jade frog. Like, it's a see-through gemstone frog that has been carved in the shape of a frog. Fascinating. Place an excellent, a uh, discerning choice of taste. This man knows what he's talking about. Um, How much do we have left? I would say with the rug and the frog... Again, I'll have to get an appraiser in here to look over the gem, but I'd say probably about a thousand gold pieces left. Um, have you considered something like yeah. a magic sword? It was very popular in, wanna, in the adventuring ask, line of work. I want to ask if he's got like a like a magic broom, like a flying flying broom. I apologize. Uh, that sort of thing sells in the capital. What kind of swords do you have? Short sword, long sword. We also sell tachis, uchi katanas, uh, swihanders, flamberges, rapiers. Uh, we sell swords that are on the end of sticks. We sell stick swords. Uh, I hear that f uh, we could... There is a magic crafter that does have a sword with a gun built into it that we could acquire in town for you. Tell me more of these stick swords. A stick sword, yes. So imagine a sword on the end of a spear, where you would have the spear point and said it's a sword. I like it. It's magically enchanted, so even though it is primarily made of wood, it is extremely difficult to destroy. Quineria, can we get the stick sword, please? Yes, I, I think that, if yes. we add that, that would conclude our deal. Okay, um, so, we... I mean... They go get you like it's it does it doesn't have like a guard uh in any way, right? It's a sword blade built onto the end of a spear. Um It looks old. Like This looks old. Yes. Is that is that a good thing, Winaria? A lot of people would say that's a plus, you know, it's it's a antique. Um will it break? Will it break? It's a magical item. If it breaks, you're probably in a lot of trouble. Is there a money back it's guarantee? No, absolutely not. We didn't forge this and we will not guarantee it. Hmm. All right. Apologies. Stick sword. Yes. So are we, are, we st are, we, are we still in the magic shop? Yes. And they have souvenirs? <laughs> They do have souvenirs. Can I get a commemorative ice wall silver spoon? I'll start getting <laughs> silver spoons at each place you go to put up in, uh, yes, put up in Dragon Hall. absolutely. <laughs> They're right next to the keychains. <laughs> All right, so just to be clear, you are walking out of here with four amulets of proof against detection and location, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. one jade magic frog, one uh, commemorative mm -hmm. I love ice wall rug, and mm -hmm. uh, a spoon, and also one plus one sword spear. I feel like I need to ask if he's got like a. I'm I'm envisioning like a like a don't tread on me bumper sticker, but instead of a snake, it's a dwarf, and says don't toss me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a embroidable again. It's like the sixteen point one. It's embroidable. You're supposed to embroider them onto the back of your pants. So that people know not to mess with you. It's like the... they do have that, but it's not magical in any way. Just to be clear, is there a common magic item here I can spend about two hundred gold on that, that Sparky can then ingest the magic from? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, like probably a, a like some or scroll, scroll or something. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, cool. That's I mean, a a if it's a potion, it's just going to do whatever the potion does to him. It's not going <laughs> to. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Did he eat the magic item, or does he just absorb the magic from it? He eats the magic item. Okay, cool. All right then. Or, or so I know we didn't give you anything, but uh, 
I yeah, I think you could use this more than I could, and I'll give him one of the uh, uh, rings of the ram. You're giving this to Sparky to Godric. Oh, to Godric. Oh, to me. Okay. Uh, I don't. I can't use it. I have. Uh, they require attunement, don't they? Oh. Um, all right. I hang on to it for you. Yeah, you you keep that. So the good thing about about rings though is that you can wear them unattuned, and if you ever get like rolled and get captured and they take your weapons at least you can then entune the rings you've got true very true i like how Um, your assumption is is that you'll get captured and you'll keep the ring somehow well there's a a greater chance you'll keep the ring than you'll keep your axe depends on where i keep the ring maybe yes (laughs) (laughs) the old prison wallet traditionally when people capture you they take your valuable looking items but uh yeah all right i suppose there is a better chance they would let you keep a ring than keep an axe um, does the shop have potions or anything in it, or is do we need to go to else for potions? potions? Yeah. Okay. Um, when you ask about it, the uh, they direct you to the temple, which is where such okay. potions are processed in Ice Wall. Oh, we should definitely get potions. Potions are amazing. There aren't that many potions available. They do a brisk business in uh basic level healing potions for the common folk. Uh, there aren't a lot of magical creatures around through which to get the materials for more exotic potions. Okay. Right. I think I think all I really all I'm really interested in are getting us like um, a bunch of basic healing okay. potions anyway. As as you're leaving, he also gives you like the Imperial Gazette as like um freebie yeah it's a freebie it's just like the rumors of the day i like politely take it and then walk like a block down the road and throw it in the yeah, trash can. yeah okay <laughs> i do i do buy the don't don't uh don't pass me uh patch <laughs> do you want them to sew it into your pants right here no absolutely not i'll do okay. it later all right Oh, you uh, know what would be a great idea? You will they all need t-shirts. to attune to your ambulance, by the way. Yes. Yeah, which will yeah. take one hour. I, I think I already spot, have so the most on and I'm attunable things. Unless yeah, I'm going to have to attune something. I'd have to take the rings off. I gave away my ring of protection as payment, so I have also forgot spot. I had a plus one battle axe. So you're walking around like Tad then with a weapon for every occasion. Pretty much. I like how I describe Tad and everyone made fun of him when, in fact, Tad is all of you. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I got a battle axe, a boomerang, a quarterstaff of warning, and my tri stick thing. Your stick spear. It's called. Yeah. Yeah. And my stick spear on top of it. I'll make it clear that as the fighter of the group, I only have two weapons on me. I have my my ancestral pickaxe, and then I have my magic axe. To be clear, it's called a sword staff, by the way, or a sword staff. God bless you. It's Swedish. Don't do that. (laughs) We've already insulted Sweden once today. Uh, I didn't insult Sweden. No one insulted Sweden. Well, we did, we we did, did imply we did, we did, we did, that hot springs, hot springs instead yeah. of yeah. All right, <laughs> I don't know that that's insulting Sweden. You apologized for it, so you clearly felt it was. A I apologize for a lot of things, James. It doesn't necessarily mean I offended anybody. I'm just covering my bases. Yeah, that's true. This ta- this team is missing a ten foot pole. They haven't used it mm-hmm. once. Um, I want to go to the 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 church or temple or whatever and start mm-hmm. buying potions. Okay. Uh, I just curious to know how much for for a potion. That's fifty gold pieces for a okay. health potion. Yep. Um, it looks like they have a like daily supply. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like they make a certain amount every day. Uh, it seems like many of them are gone, but there are still twelve left at fifty gold pieces a piece. Like Can you I... go in, right? It's that traditional cathedral. At the end, above the organ, is a stone figure of the emperor, and then there's, like, 
the god of knowledge that this particular temple is dedicated to is figure, featured prominently. And then many of the gods of the empire are also seen, uh, not along the ceiling, but like statues along the side. And then, you know, there's a confessional booth to your right and the rectory. And then to your left is like the nice potion selling stand where an old, a nice looking old nun with gray hair is seated on a bench just right next to it. She sees you interested and she says, oh, dearie. Are you looking for some potions? You seem to be in a dangerous kind of work. Uh, yes, I can always use potions in my line of work. How many do you have? We have uh, one, two, three, uh, 12 left. Well, okay, cool. And I, I drop 600 gold on the table. Uh, she hands you back 50 and says, you know what? Let's just give you a discount because <laughs> this means I can go home for the day. Uh, <laughs> oh, would you, you like a bag? Uh, I put them in my bag of holding. Okay. Well, how very magical of you. <laughs> Thank you and bless you. Are you are you religious? Uh, yes, but maybe maybe not to your um, maybe not to your deity. That's okay. The God of no. Knowledge blesses all. I, <laughs> I, I can offer you a blessing, but if you're not comfortable that with that theologically, then just know that the God of Knowledge is looking out for you. Oh, uh, thank you. May the god of the forge protect you. Oh, delightful. I've never been gonna, blessed I'm by gonna, the god of the forge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her an extra uh, gold coin and tell her that dinner's on me tonight. Okay. <laughs> and I know a, a gold coin is a lot. It's like, it's, it is a lot. It's yes. like dinner for the week. Yes, one silver coin <laughs> is one day, full day's labor payment. So, for, mm -hmm. for a major family. So, yeah. So... What is that, 551 gold in a mouth? Yes. Come. She goes, oh, I guess I'll take the girls out tonight and we'll get steak. <laughs> it's girls night. <laughs> okay. 524 gold left. And you have 12 healing potions. Yep. Which undoubtedly will reach the end of campaign without ever having been used. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever uses healing potions. Uh, what kind of healing potions were there? Just basic? There's a basic minor D fours or whatever it is. On D and D Beyond, you'll just type healing potion and it'll okay. Potion of healing. All right. I'm gonna add. It'll only let me add ten. Okay. It'll only let you add ten. <laughs> yeah, wow. only Suffering add... from success. And we add a stack of 10 and then a stack of two. Um, I'm just going to leave them in my inventory, but I'll, I'll say I'll distribute them to the rest of the party as, as you guys need them. Okay. So whoever, however many you guys want, just let me know and I'll, I'll keep track of it. Is there a trash can somewhere? I'm done with my beer. Are you still back in the... Wait, did you bring the glass stein with you out of yeah. the... I don't think they let you do that. <laughs> Glass is extremely expensive. <laughs> Plus, there's probably some sort of open container laws in this, in this town. <laughs> yeah, it's a civilized country. <laughs> I feel like you would have had to pour it into your wine skin and you've been walking around with that. So this... was, there a slight, was there a slight of hand while to try and steal the mug? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yes. Wow, you really just... You want to be arrested, huh? You really just... <laughs> Make a roll. Did he roll 10? Oh, Jesus. Okay. You better you better pray that the god of, <laughs> of knowledge is on your side right now. Okay. So, as you are exiting the temple and rejoining the rest of the party, a group of four guards are approaching and they point at your tiefling and say, Hold it right there. We need to speak with you. Quick, do a sleight of hand and ditch it in the trash can before they see it. I mean, you're <laughs> obviously openly walking around with it. <laughs> I just chuck it as hard as I can. <laughs> okay. One of the guards goes to grab it and the other three move to surround you. Damn, they're pretty quick. I mean, they're probably Damn. like... 60 or 70 feet away from you. Okay. They're not that fast. Like I said, <laughs> they're moving to surround you. You have time to do something. It's flying through the air? Yeah. The smug? 
Can yeah. I mage hand to grab it and hold it uh, in place? Does a beer stein weigh less than five pounds? I have a beer stein, I think. Absolutely. So. Yeah, you catch oh, the, you catch it in midair? Yeah. Okay. And, and then I gently lower it to the ground. So that right. half pounds is how much it weighs. So <laughs> the the one guard like was out there playing catch, but then you like lower it and he takes it. What are you doing? I'm just standing here. Okay, Tanera, you are surrounded by three guards, and like one of them pulls out some irons and I'm just like, ma'am, you're gonna need to come with us for some questioning. Why? That clearly stolen. The Stein very obviously has the tavern stamp on it. I don't have the Stein. We just watched you throw it. Now, now, if if it's being returned, surely we can make... I, I don't think she realized she couldn't walk around the street with it and return it later. Yes. All right. Look, I understand. I'm going to need you to come with us so that we can have some questions answered. Come on. I was just having some fun. Okay. I didn't realize I couldn't take it. The Nobody guard with the anything. irons out is now aggressively attempting to like get you... Not not like behind your back, like forward style. Just get them on you. Really? Really, guys? Come on. Isn't there a fine we can pay? Oh, this is this is becoming a cops episode right now. <laughs> <laughs> a drunken belligerent and their th their three friends and their dragon yeah. are being arrested in broad daylight, open carrying both weapons and alcohol. I didn't it know. Nobody said we couldn't open carry here. <laughs> It's that you're dangerous. How? For you're drinking? You, no, no, no. So for these guards, your companions are clearly extremely, like, maybe not you, although now you have a battle axe and a sword staff on your back. So yeah, you all look like you're heavily armored, covered in magic it's, items and weapons. It's just a, a stick sword. <laughs> all right, Tenere, man. Let's, let's go with them. I, dear officials, the, the I don't think there necessary. are any new there any need for irons and look we're just gonna take her to the guardhouse answer yes. a few questions and issue a fine all right yes we will accompany we will okay. all go with you we, we don't need any okay we don't need and everyone to come okay. with, with her all right. you can wait outside of the guardhouse for her yes I, okay. i'm trying to persuade um, them to not use ridiculous. the restraint there should be like okay. a sign or something that says you can't drink in the streets make a persuasion check they're not carriage. arresting you for drinking in the streets. They're arresting you for stealing a valuable object. That nobody told me I couldn't take. It's just glass. It's just... <laughs> oh. A 12? All right. 12. <clears throat> All right. You know what? If you're willing to come willingly, we don't need the restraints. Just come with us, fam. Uh, yes. I have perfectly good legs. All right. So you're surrounded by three guards, the fourth guard is just like citing you he's like all right so we've got uh, theft of property and because you tried to throw the glass that's also going to be attempted you frightened of me property uh, all right uh looks like uh we're gonna be looking at a, a pretty big fine here i'm gonna cite you for five gold two silver pieces uh and Can here's a guardhouse right here let's just get you sit down do uh, i need to sit down can i just pay you and leave do you, you have the money on you yeah boom nailed it let's go okay all right ma'am you can't just steal glasses i didn't tablets. know i paid for the beer i thought the glass came with it I don't but know where future. you come from, but the glass is not gratis in the Empire. Oh, well, at my house it is. But I'll be careful not to do it next time. Good evening, gentlemen. Minus five gold pieces. And two silver. And two silver. And All right, this is silver. definitely going to be a story these guys are telling for the next <laughs> week to everyone that they meet. <laughs> we arrested her, and she had the full fine on hand to pay us with. I was surprised you didn't try pulling the tiefling race card. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. We already Listen. did the muggle thing, guys. We, we yeah, can't let's not get canceled today. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I wasn't holding the beer, I might have. All right. You walk 
back outside where your friends are waiting for you. I love that you're like, we're all going to follow her to the prison cell. And the guards are just like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're, we're, it, we're, it's not that we're concerned about her. It's we're concerned we're, about her. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm concerned for the guards in case Daenerya decides this is another problem she can solve with violence. Yes. <laughs> Solves so many problems. I, I, I can tell you from all my years of bouncing that um, hens parties are much worse than bucks parties. Mm. Ah. Because oh, yeah. with, with a bucks party, when you tell some when you tell someone they're drunk and they have to leave, you know their mates all, all arc up a bit and eventually they'll say, "Okay, no worries, you got to go." Whereas with a hens party, no one in the hens party will let any individual get, be kicked out. They'll, no, they're my friend. About they it, they'll, stay they'll make a lot of noise. Yep, and it just becomes yeah. a, a, a slog. <laughs> I was gonna say, yes. I have a friend who used to, uh, whenever we'd go to bars, they'd always steal a bar glass. That's what I'm saying, dude. Yeah, my, 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 my brother, when I thought the, copper, bar, the still, copper cup was complimentary. Glass is a lot pull, more accessible balls. in the modern era, friends. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't require a master craftsman acquiring Wait, sand so... from across the country and then hand blowing it. <laughs> Does Guineera still have the cup or did they take it? No, they took it from <laughs> you. It was the first thing that I, they did. I mage handed it. You mage handed it and one of them picked got it that up. Later. You could just if buy broke, your own glass. I did buy it with the beer. Oh my god. <laughs> go to Carson, go to this red fair ass say, motherfucker. <laughs> You've been spoiled. This is a generic fantasy world, not a generic <laughs> modern world. Yeah. If it was ungeneric, I would have had the glass. Yeah, if it was ungeneric, the bottom of it would have been stamped Ice Wall, number one, <laughs> with a serial code. Uh, so you are now at... Oh, people are saying it's break time. All right, the ads yeah, must yeah. be hitting. We'll be back for whatever I was about to describe in about five <laughs> minutes. Stick around if you want more cops. <laughs> I was, I just started watching, um, uh, oh God, what's the show? Um, Supernatural. Okay. No, I just started watching Supernatural. Oh, I was just going to start because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm planning my next, my, my D&D game that I'm running now is wrapping up. And um, I was planning my next one and one of the ones my players were interested in was um, set in like modern times and like the Appalachian like mountains dealing with like monsters and stuff and um they're like oh that sounds kind of like supernatural and i'm like i've never seen the show but i like I, i've always understood kind of like the premise so i just started watching it last night supernatural is a great show about the player characters because the way the way they act is just how player characters act it's like oh we need to break in here no worries let's make fake fbi badges and, and just show them you that's, know that's what i hate <laughs> about season one and why i didn't continue with the show is that they're consistently breaking the law and the, the law enforcement are just like well okay we did catch you obviously impersonating law enforcement, which is a federal <laughs> offense, but we're going to let you go. Yep. And then they do it in the next time. I'm just like, well, what the That's heck? how RPGs work. <laughs> well, listen, if you are going to do something set in the Appalachian Mountains, I just need you to know that in West Virginia, there is a, a mythical mom's. monster known as the Sheep Squatch. Uh, oh. And if it's not in your game, you have really failed your players. What's it called? The Sheep what? Sheep Squatch. Sheep Squatch. Sheep. Sasquatch, but with sheep. Here they also have mountain llamas. Yeah, mountain sorry. llamas are real. They're they're not <laughs> mythical. Just a, a llama from the mountains. <laughs> pretty pretty standard llama territory, actually. South America? This is like 80% mountain? You find yourselves in the noonday sun in the middle of ice wall. It's a little cold, a little chilly. You're outside of the guard post somewhere in the interior of the town. People around you are a little irritated having to move around you, but they get you space because you're clearly not from around here, well-armed and somewhat magical. There's a burble of conversation over a number of issues. People walking together are talking about things, and it's also lunchtime, so... A lot of talk about stuff like that. Uh, there are many things you could listen into, but the one complaint that seems to be pretty constant is Imperial Script keeps coming up as being a real hassle. 
probably like someone drops a piece of imperial script while they're walking and then they're like ah oh, now it's muddy i don't does any is they still gonna accept this and like their two friends are like having an argument about it now and someone's like just wipe it off on your clothes and the guy's like i'm gonna wipe it off on your clothes what do you want to do Day drinking is fun. <laughs> this is what they need to invent plastic money. Am I right, Lauren? Yes. Okay, Commonwealth countries, get off your damn high horse. <laughs> With little see-through windows and holograms, yeah. and it's just fantastic. You can put it in the wash, and it comes out fine. James, why the hell are you posting pictures of chupacabras as, as cappy barks? <laughs> Every time someone mentions like um, the, uh, weird, weird monsters, I always think of that me when people are like, oh, I don't, I don't want people to scare of chupacabra. It's like, that's a capybara. Chupacabras are snake eating goats. Capybaras yeah. are orange eating rodents. They are the world's largest rodent. There you go. Get yourself a nice capybara maximus and ride it into the sunset. Hey, I am small. <laughs> Probably just get a large capybara. <laughs> but that's that's the plot of the Stars of Thought Numbers show that I'm running, mm -hmm. is there are no horses or domestic riding animals except for genetically engineered capybaras. Mm -hmm. That's a world I want hey, to live in. You, you, you're lucky, AP, when I played D&D &D with you, I never, I never invoked my desire to play a um, pixie paladin riding a, a dog uh, and, and, and channel, no. channeling um, Sir Didymus from Labyrinth. Great. We'll do uh, we'll do Forgotten Realms AD&D, &D, and you can play a drow matron dual-wielding lances riding a spider. <laughs> and deal 10,000 damage a hit. So where are we going now? <laughs> We Sparky should just, with... just to be yeah, clear, gotta, Sparky is completely over this shit. Like you being arrested was super annoying for him. He is the he is the GM self insert. He's not the GM self insert. <laughs> Ideas of property. You stole something. Dragons are really particular about when people steal things. It wasn't gold. Oh, you think well, it's okay got... because it isn't gold? Maybe. So if I ate your sword staff tomorrow, you would be okay with that because it wasn't gold. I didn't eat the glass. Would it Can't... have been better if you had eaten the glass? No, it would have hurt. <laughs> I'm not right, going let's... to be drawn if into my this sword ridiculous. Stick is gone tomorrow. Yeah, I'm don't, get, don't, get, that's it, don't get drawn in. Just, you just wanted rest. me to be a hero, but you act like the villain. I wouldn't say stealing a glass is villainy. I'd say stealing a mother and keeping her in a in a cage is villainy. You know that's not what I'm talking about. You're hardly a paragon of virtue yourself. I don't claim to be, nor have I refer to myself as a hero. This gives Sparky something to think about. Sparky I'm, is I'm, up on I'm their definitely... hind legs. You can see that their wings are trying to lift off and, <laughs> and not quite magically doing it. And they're they're like a dog or a cat on their hind legs, like tentatively walking forward, not puss and boots style. Um, Sparky is, is deeply annoyed by this situation. I, I'll definitely talk to Sparky once. Once we okay. go back to like our rooms, um... Uh, what I, think I like that, is that uh, you've never been very big into ownership, and as a dragon, Sparky has an extremely different worldview on possession and capital than you do. And we haven't clashed on it yet, but I guess Tanira in the Today glass. Today is the day. <laughs> Today is the day, hippie. <laughs> <laughs> so so we if, need if we to are going back with the elves. Okay. I mean, the elves haven't even started the the council for the night oh. yet. Well, if it's right on meeting, it guess what? Hey, we we're best to keep wow. until tomorrow. Wow! <laughs> He's not here to hear me. I can make fun of him. Wow! I agree. Mm -hmm. If he was here, you could still make fun of him. <laughs> he couldn't be here anyway. There's no couches to lay on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's he gonna do about it? Fall over <laughs> in despair? Lay in the street with the money. You guys are 
huge bullies to all of your closest <laughs> allies. Really it's ridiculous. all in good fun. He's the leader of a people. He's very important. <clears throat> There's really not much that we, uh, until we decide, are they, are we taking them to the portal if they want to go? And then are we going to the capital city and then to the estate for a visit? I believe so, that's the plan. plan. Okay. Well, until... Well, we, we say that, but we also don't know what the elves are currently planning. No. They they still have to convene their... And then we have to talk to them about their plans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have to convince them that their plans are, are either wrong or not and make sure they're making the right decisions. Mm -hmm. In the meantime... Well, yeah, in the meantime, what do you want to do? Day drinking. Just an idea. I thought this was the afternoon touch evening anyway. What's well, like two or three in the afternoon right now? It's noon. I opened this discussion <laughs> okay, by saying the noon it's day. It's noon and people are talking about lunch. <laughs> oh, we should do lunch. Let's do that. <laughs> Am I cooking or are we going out to eat? I'm down for whatever. Oh, let's go out to eat. I still have some gold on me. And they love getting coin instead of screen. <laughs> I'm I will take everyone for lunch. I'm going to try to grab somebody that's like walking by and be like, do you know of anywhere good to eat? I'll make a Christmas saving throw real quick. All right. I want to see how good the recommendation is. Christmas. They're going to say the ice wall in. The same no. place you stole the bar no, glass from. I don't want that. I don't want to save. I want to check. There you go. Yes. Okay, 15. You like grab this person roughly and you shake them out of like a fugue state and they go, Hey, uh, can you take your hand off me? Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to be. Yeah. Pansy. Uh, sorry. What was your question? Do you know of anywhere delicious to eat? Yeah. You from out of town? Yes. I would love a recommendation. You should really go to Benekins. Do you like spicy food? Benekins. Yes. Love okay. Spicy they have food. river ice peppers that are fantastic. They ice make peppers. a sort of local fusion of traditional imperial dishes from from Central. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, like uh, things you wouldn't normally get up here, like chicken what and would beef. You, what would you get if you went there? I mean, when I go there, I almost always get the chicken tiki marsala with extra ice pepper. But, uh, you know. Done. Thank you so much for your help. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Guys, chicken tiki masala. Let's do it. And I point. Where is it again? That way? That way? You know what? I think I'll just go to Pedikins as well. Why don't you just follow me? Perfect. While we're, while we're going, I want to keep a lookout to see if I see anyone from Dr. Lansky's party. And then if I do, I'm going to invite them to come meet with us. You absolutely see someone from Dr. Lansky's party. It is currently um, present. On Grimdark James's character, a destroyed <laughs> spider. Not, not the spider. There are no I don't, I don't other think members <laughs> visibly present to your passive perception. That aren't. Would squished. you like to make a perception roll? Yes, I would. Okay. I want to buy the, the the dinner for the guy who's showing us the way to lunch. But sure, that too. Nope. A ten. You, yep. it, it's real crowded around here right now, and okay. you, visually you don't see anybody you know, except for us. Yes, <laughs> except for you. Uh, yeah. So you know this guy. If you invite him to sit at your table, he will. Otherwise, he's going to sit at the bar and get a meal. I mean, either way, if he wants to sit at the bar, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite him to come sit with us. Okay, yeah, yeah he's, they get you a table for six. Um. He is speaking a not not the common language. He's speaking in uh, like old imperial to the waitress, which seems to move him up in the line of people ordering. And what mm. he gets is rather than get an individual dish, he gets a table, uh, like, like a group setting of the tiki masala. Right. 
Right, right. Um, yeah, so he, he just, like, there's, like, a quick talk before any of you could say anything. He's just like, yeah, so it's going to come with, like, the bread. Don't overeat the bread. You want the bread in order to cool your mouth down. You can also get some goat's milk. That'll be pretty helpful. I just don't know how prepared you are for river ice peppers. Uh, Bennekins can be a little extreme, especially for first-timers like this. I got the medium level of spice. Yes, I do see on the menu there's one pepper, two pepper, or three pepper on here. Yes. <laughs> Many do people have... leave crying on the one pepper. I got the two pepper. Do they have any ale? Uh, actually, there's been this weird, irritating local law where they only sell lager until the evening. No ale. Is that the same? No, they're not the same, unfortunately. I guess the goat's milk then. We we can get you lager. I just okay. oh. is it? yes. I was gonna say uh, it's not like it's not like primary lager or something, is it? I, I, primary <laughs> lager? Jesus. I need to I need to speak up here. And I'm really sorry to you, sir. You have to see this because you seem like a genuinely nice person and yeah. I need to have this conversation with my with my fellows here. Mm -hmm. Um but Tanira, what is it gonna take? For you to like actually progress like we're all in this together we're all working together and the amount of trouble we get into because you decide to go off and do your own thing or you what pick a trouble? fight with people with hey, the pit you pick a fight with people we're trying to make friends with you take something that you just don't care about i didn't think you tried to steal that mug i just think you just didn't care about other people's stuff all right so we're all a group we're working together and you're seem to be working on your own the majority of the time you know the amount of times when so i can't the, have the, self interests i can't have a good time i'm just saying that there are times when there is clearly a person among our group that is the most skilled to do something and just go and do it yourself anyway and then you'll mess it up and then we have to deal with the consequences of that and i mess it up yeah well, because maybe you, you're, you're, you're not always the most because i'm out of here this is fucking ridiculous i just wanted food i'll just get up and leave you like bump into the waitress okay. who's holding a, a bowl of fruit salad she's like oh sorry did you not like fruit salad no i love fruit salad so sorry not about you i'm going to leave now okay she puts the fruit salad in the middle of the table as an appetizer and it's like so split check or no how this... much is it oh, yeah. yeah so this guy here's the thing when you came in this guy came with tanira and tanira said she was gonna pay <laughs> So now he's like, uh, and the waitress is like, uh, as well. No, 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 no. We'll, 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 we'll pay, we'll pay. Okay. We'll pay. All right. So she I'll, leaves I'll turn, the, I'll, I'll turn the other two. Sorry, am I out of line? Like, I mean. No, I think it needed to be said. Sparky is 100% invested in this. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to tell you guys to wait here and I'm going to go get to Nira and try to bring her back. All right. Sparky okay. is eating the mountain cranberries out of the bowl specifically mm -hmm. moving all of the fruits aside to get those cranberries i'm sitting back looking super uncomfortable yeah mm -hmm. it's pretty rare for james to raise his voice i was i was <laughs> shocked in real life well it's, 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 rare for kids, it's, it's rare for kids to raise their voice as well so that's why it had gravitas uh so I think we we see the the young man who we haven't got the name of or a description of in any way. Um, he's wearing like a if I said a wizard cap, you'd understand what I, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's like very small. Like the tall part is tall, but the brim is not very wide. Uh, it's got like a little purple flower on it, and he's wearing mm -hmm. like a gray cloak and then like workers clothes. Um, he's just like grabbing a fig and uh, getting into it as the camera follows our resident dwarf to go speak with our no longer resident tiefling. I'm trying to imagine how cool a game resident tiefling would be. <laughs> Play it. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Uh, whenever I catch up to Tanira, uh, listen, everyone's hungry. Everyone's going to be saying things. Everyone's got that, that hanger. Right now, you're hungry. You're hungry and upset. 
Yes, because it's episode. bullshit. I've saved our lives on multiple locations, on multiple times, and I can't, you know, have a day off once in a time. I have to be a, a tight ass like Kithrix the entire time. It's bullshit, especially in front of our new friend. Well, okay, I don't give a damn about our new friend right now. Um, what I care about is our group and what we do. Um, and I'm always there for you guys. And yet I'm met with this kind of, I don't even, I'm so mad right now. I don't even, I can't even words. We're all here for each other. And that's something that I think is, is getting lost in, in, in the moment. Um, I think the two of you may need to apologize to each other because shouting at each other in the middle of a crowded, busy restaurant, maybe not, not the best. It doesn't matter. But it may not be the best. <laughs> it doesn't look good on any of us. All right. Which and we're why in it shouldn't have been handled there. And why we're in a position where we need to try to stay low. Right. We don't need anyone drawing attention. Not apologizing. Okay. Well, we, we can discuss that after we've eaten. Come on back. Come sit down. Let's eat. That's way more. It's way too much food for at least the two of them. And, and I don't even know what this, this other guy can put away. So, I mean, just between you and me, Kithrix and, and Gwineria are not going to put away a group tiki masala. Should probably explode. I mean, this is meant for four normal sized people. So <laughs> with Kithrix here and a not regular food, people eating dragon, it's going to be a rough one. So let's go back. We'll get some, we'll get whatever this lager is. We'll get, if we need the goat's milk. We can get that goat's milk. Well, we'll get the food. Just come on back. I'm just thinking Let about the food eat. at this point, And I'm just like, fine. That's fine. We can worry about apologies later and who, who is no. being mean to who. I'm not apologizing. You better well, not like come at me again. Her. I'll drop that motherfucker. We'll... <laughs> I, I have a feeling she'll see it coming. She probably dodged <laughs> it pretty easily. Uh, I don't I walk in. I don't look I, at anybody. Okay. I think after uh, Godric sits back down, I, I just kind of put my hands on the table a little, like like a little heavy thunk as they hit the table and say, "Okay, no talking about business while we're at the the, the lunch table." Anything, any kind of dispute we have, we can solve it later in private. I want to be clear that while you're saying this, in a very dog-like manner, Sparky's entire muzzle is lowered into the fruit salad, moving everything else out of the way to do that dog like, hop, 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 like four licks in order to get a mountain cranberry into his mouth and then hock it down with his head facing upwardly. Mm -hmm. Uh... That's the only thing he eats out of the entire salad. Yeah, the mountain cranberry. So he's <laughs> pears, figs, apple. He licks all of them in the process to get to right, the mountain right. cranberry. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm just I'm gonna drop a gold coin in there for Sparky to go find. I'm sure it's not gonna take long, but I mean, it doesn't even hit it. You, you <laughs> smash it out of midair. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make it clear. Every time I give him a gold coin, I actually take one out of my inventory. Good. Excellent. Way the D and D gods prepared us. I stopped mm -hmm. having uh, Guineria's brownies steal money from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you may remember that was a storyline. Yeah. I dropped it after a while because Guineria seemed annoyed, so the brownies stopped doing it. <laughs> Why am I suddenly getting extra coins? What is that? Oh. It's just another mystery. It's uh. not a mystery. It's because you're Fay. Okay, so while we're while we're at the table. Um, I'm going to apologize to this guy who's eating with us for the little outburst, oh. but then I want to ask him, um, yeah, no problem. I'm going to ask him, uh, what, like the local scuttlebutt, local rumors, everything like that is what's, oh, what, what are the locals talking about? Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not technically local. I mean, I've worked here for the last three years, but I'm actually the, from... more local than us. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, let me think. Um, 
you know, obviously Imperial script is a pretty contentious issue. Mm -hmm. uh, the Emperor's uh, announced, you know, the script. It was pretty popular at the time. Um, uh, there were dragons in the East that were defeated a couple months ago. You might not have heard that. You look like you just came out of the North. Um, yeah, like the Imperial Sky Knights 5th Division went out there uh, and uh, and defeated them, came back. Uh, they're rebuilding the 5th now. The 2nd has been dispatched to the East. Hey guys, it wasn't my hard drive. Just, uh, just OBS crashed. So I left off with uh, a Baron in the South died under mysterious circumstances. So uh, bear or Baron? Baron, Baron, noble Baron. baron, okay. baron okay, yes. Nice. The real Baron. Um, no, Baron Petrosia, oh. uh, actually. Um, Wait, was Baron Petrosia the one we made the song about? Uh, no. In fact, Baron Petrosia is the one that you bought. Yeah, that was, the, that was, a, that was a countess from. we made the one about. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dragonhold was Baron Petrosia's holding. Um, you uh, received it from him as payment for doing a job for him. Gotcha. Um, yeah, uh, there's been some question of, I mean, I was speaking to the Archmage the other day, and she mentioned that there was, um, a lot of road work being done in the capital. There's just been some, like, uh, uh, plants popping up all around the capital's roads. That was that's pretty unusual. I mean, they're all magically warded. You spoke so with she's... the Archmage. Yeah. Isn't the Archmage miles from here? Oh yeah. He points to his hat. Oh, you you walk all those miles? Um, no, I'm 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 a student of the arcane arts. I'm a, I'm a wizard. Oh, well, yeah. congratulations! The hat was a big giveaway. I'm well, guessing you guys aren't imperial citizens. No. no. Okay, well, I'm kind of like one of the Archmage's apprentices. I mean, she's got hundreds of them, but she just checks in on us from time to time, you know, just to make sure that we're not doing evil stuff or... What kind uh, of magic do you study? I, I am an abjurer, so, you know... Bless you. You seem like you're having a rough time, so I'm just going to let that one pass. I appreciate it. Uh, I, like, stop divinations or or put wards on things um the shield spell you might have heard of that that's an abjuration uh protections charms that sort of thing i like enchantment charms like good health that's sort of right right the good magic um i don't know that you could strictly say that magic is good or evil i've realized there's a dragon at this table so that's going to be a really long argument that I'm not sure I'm prepared to defend. Does, but does he know that there's a dragon at the table, or is Sparky still wearing his dog disguise? Uh, I, I think it's... Sparky <laughs> I think it's was showing his wings earlier. Oh, okay. that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the dog disguise is intact, but this guy is not an idiot. Yeah. yeah uh. I'd say the thing that worries me most is that everyone seems so busy and irritated. It really feels like there's a collapse of the community lately. You know, I guess you don't know, but, you know, there always used to be this feeling that we were like an empire. And recently it just kind of feels like we're all an island. Just, um, listen to people outside. It seems that most people aren't that keen on the script change well you know it it's a rough topic of discussion certainly peasants aren't educated like a wizard or a noble in some way but everyone instinctively knows the value of the things that they own and trade within and without the empire is based on the strength of its currency with a gold coin, you know exactly what you're getting, right? You know, it's again, I, I'm not an economics major, and it's not like I'm a transmutation specialist, but you take a gold coin from here, you can pretty much spend it anywhere. If it's got the emperor's face on it, you know that as long as this emperor is strong, that currency has value even in other countries. But now, 
how much our currency is worth is kind of questionable. You know, another country can take our gold pieces and melt it down and get a relatively equivalent value. I mean, relative to the strength of our economy, right? Like the absolute value of the gold, if there is an app. Paper currency makes things difficult. And more importantly, the empire is now in a dual currency system where imperial script exists, but people still desire their coin. And as long as they don't pay shopkeepers and they continue to trade it between themselves through bartering, it has value. But what value it has is declining with everyone who turns their currency in. So it's kind of a difficult proposition. Wow, I didn't think I'd have a conversation like this at lunch. Uh, so yeah, that effect on people. I want to be clear that after Sparky started eating mountain cranberries, unless one of you touches it, no one else is going for that fruit. <laughs> I will. I will. Okay. Yeah, I don't think Godric has a, has an issue with it. All right. Uh, but around this point, the fruit bowl is being removed, and mm -hmm. a long plank filled with bread and chicken covered in an orange sauce that has obviously a couple of different vegetables and some really obvious bright red peppers. Finally. So let me just say, AP, that although I, James, am not, Kifrix is definitely the sort of pet owner who would encourage their pet to lick their face. Perfect. And, because... and therefore has no has no compulsions about, you know, eating something that the pet has licked. Good. God, I just heard <laughs> that dragon's mouths are cleaner than ours. Dragon's mouths are cleaner than yours. <laughs> I'm going for the food. <laughs> All right. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Let's do it. Oh, that's do, we, do we all need to make a con save? If you're eating the two pepper spice level uh, river ice pepper, yes. Okay, dinner. Um, that's your nose, your face burns, your lips burns, your this burns so good. Burns. <gasps> you rolled an eight and you still got a 15, yeah. God. <laughs> this yep. dwarven this magic. Dwarf. My con is my highest stat. Okay, get, both of you are fine. He gets a lot of bonuses for not it's, being able to be Just strong. be clear, this is like Thai food. Uh, mm. It's incredibly spicy. This is Thai food from an authentic Thai restaurant, not We're like... Saying. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I do not do that. Who, who, would, who would think that chicken, masala, chicken tikka masala was like Thai food? <laughs> <laughs> I'm describing at, like Thai food as a spice, spice. level. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just to be clear, chicken tikka masala is a British dish, not, not yeah. an Indian dish. Yeah. Uh, it was invented I in reach, Br Breton. I reach for the goat's milk. Yeah. <laughs> it's conveniently <laughs> placed near you. Uh, nice. Yeah, and they've got the flatbread for you if you need to help soak mm. that poison off mm -hmm. of your tongue. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it, Listen, it's delicious. There are some nuts in here as well. It's great. It's also mm. super spicy. This is delicious. Thank you so much for recommending it. Um, you could see he's clearly casted a spell on himself. Like, he's just uh, casting a spell on himself. Yeah, and then uh, goes at it and he goes, Ah, you know, I, I specifically developed a new cantrip to eat this without, you know, I get all of the flavor, I get all of the spice with none of the physical after effects. Oh. If you, if you can't handle the spice, why would you order at the spice level? It just, it tastes so good with my protection. What does the does the protection help at all when it when it eventually comes out? Yeah, it's a cantrip. It like coats what you're about to eat. The organs. I, I think I might need to learn this spell. Okay, you cast it on you real quick. I mean, you can't learn the spell. You're a divine caster. Mm -hmm. The spells that you're given are decided by your god, and all of the spells they give you are good enough for you. <laughs> you don't agree, find a new god. Uh, this is an arcade... Again, we keep coming up to this. This is an arcade spell that he has developed. But yeah, he uh, spends six seconds in uh, enchanting something and then touching you, and suddenly the spice... You have all of the flavor and all of the heat, but none of the pain associated with it. It's just like a relief of pressure. Oh, it burns so good. <sighs> he's just chewing away at it, and he's just like... Mm, yeah, this is good. This is good stuff. You know, I wasn't really going to come here today, but uh, 
You know, seeing all of your problems has really put my problems in perspective as petty and small. Yeah, well, that's the life of an adventurer. Yeah, you've got some real internal turmoil here. I mean, you know, for us wizards, we just kind of no, like... No, no, shh, shh, not at the table. Not at oh, the table. I was, I was not at the table. A spell duel, but okay. Nope, mm -mm, nope not at the table. What's Sometimes you just have to fight. Oh, a spell duel? I'm so glad you asked. So <laughs> I'm actually something of a pretty good duelist myself. I just kind of survive all of my enemies' hits until they run out of spells, and then I just kind of like you know, throw a, a rock covered in magic at them. Interesting. Um, Are there know, any little... ways to counter spells, say for like a fighter? Counter spell, actually. I'm not uh, powerful enough to know it yet, but... Oh, did you, you know, say like for a... a fighter? Yeah, yeah. there's there's uh, some old fighting stuff. I actually have some manuals back at my place. It's called the Mage Slayer. Ooh. I would be interested in that. Mm -hmm. Really? All right, well... Uh... Do you like to share? I, I don't want to impose. You've yeah, already I mean, done so much. Uh, I guess I have time tonight. I mean, I, I do have to get back to work after this, but uh, I could come here for dinner, and then we can go back to my place. Not for anything. Right. Just to look at the manuals. Learning. Very normal mm -hmm. for wizard to invite other wizards to look at manuals together. Well, I'm not a wizard, but I take your meeting. Sure. I get it. I mean, it's a fighting style that some wizards adopt, mostly... Wizards who were fighters that became wizards. Eldritch Knights. Perfect. I'm just going to keep eating. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So anyway, you know, anything goes at a spell duel, but you're not trying to hurt the other person permanently. You're just trying to prove that your magic is stronger. You know? Right. Well, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really prove that your, your point is any better than anybody else's, but... Wizards just want to flex their powers yeah. sometime, show how much they've learned in the book. And really, even if you don't have as many spells as another wizard, if you use your spells wisely, you can still succeed. And that really is what shows how strong you are. Right. A win is a win. A win is a win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your... I don't believe I asked your name. Malik? Malik. Thank you, Malik. Malik the Vermilion? Malik the Vermilion. He points what to the flower on his hat. It's kind of a little purple, a little red. Sounds like a good strong name. Um, I think it's awesome. I was hoping for a primary color, but I haven't earned that yet. Vermilion, though, it kind of rolls Oops. off the tongue. What What is this about colors? It's <laughs> how wizards are rated. You know, Archmage, primary colors, uh, you know, R Roy G. Biv sort of thing. Um, I've heard of him. Yeah, I know some of you here have um, dark vision, so it may not apply to you. So you see, you know, a wider range of spectrums. Um, human, but the Archmage is human, so we base all of our stuff off of humans. What color is the Archmage? She's the Archmage. She can use all of the schools of magic. So all of, she's a rainbow. Um, They're a rainbow. I guess. I don't know that I'd say it like that. But sure. I mean, just to be clear, just because I'm an abjurer doesn't mean I can't use other schools of magic. It's just more annoying. Right, right. The Archmage doesn't have that holding her back. Is, is red higher or violet higher? Red, uh, red or violet are equal rank, you know? Oh, there's they're different. different yeah, prim primary different color. Different all one circle. Yeah. And then, you know, secondary. I'm kind of a tertiary color as an apprentice. Uh, Vermilion. I think I managed to dodge Mauve. No one really likes that. Uh, you know, a lot of people like secondaries like Lavender. I like I, I could I could rock a Lavender one day. I think. I'm yeah, gonna turn my cloak fuchsia. into like. See the thing. The interesting thing about fuchsia is it might not really be a color. There's been some argument about that for some time, but the Archmage has declined to comment, so... Some people say that about Teal. I'm gonna change my cloak into, like, a light leather with a lavender color to it. Alright, he's impressed when you use a magic item in front of him. He's just like, oh, cool. She's a nice color. Sure. Are you a magic user? Oh, no, not at all. Just, uh, okay. 
I like magic items. Sure. Collector, I suppose. Are you an adventurer? Yes, indeed. Okay. You did mention something briefly about that, but some people say that sarcastically, or they like, they brag, like, I'm an adventurer, because they left town one time and, like, <laughs> accidentally killed someone's goat and then said that they secretly killed a goat-eating snake or something. No, no, nothing like that. We uh, actually were the ones to defeat the dragon in the east. Really? He's going to roll insight real quick. <laughs> Too bad that wizards don't have terribly high wisdom. He just <laughs> nods and you can tell he doesn't believe me. He goes, Oh, yeah, that's so interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I get up from the table. Yeah. I, oh, I can't handle this heat. Can't handle it. I take a piece of the bread. I'm like drawing tears. He's reaching towards you. He's like, do you? What he knows a spell. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. It's, 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 just excuse me a moment. I will I will be back. And um, to Kithrix and Draconic, I whisper, I don't want this. I don't want him to know who I am. And then I leave. Uh, she's leaving. I'll, I'll call behind her. I'll make something more tame for dinner. I would appreciate that. Yeah. And then and then mention to this guy that he can join us for dinner. I know he mentioned um, mm -hmm. us having dinner with him. Uh, he mentioned he would come back here for dinner. but For dinner. Yeah. I guess if you want to do that, he comes to some sort of agreement where he'll bring his Mage Slayer books with him mm -hmm. to dinner to read. And he'll also bring the tea, like tea leaves. Ooh, tea. Oh, lovely. Yes. I feel like we should bring something. He does I'm, I'm casually, oh. so he casually <laughs> says, like, so, you know, if you defeated the dragon, you know, you've met the captain of the 5th Imperial Sky Knight Division. Yes, we have. Uh, what was her name again, Galdrick? Yeah, that, that was going to be his question, was what was her name again? <laughs> Hold on, this is why I take notes. Yeah. <laughs> it's in there somewhere. Let me, I know let it me is. scroll back a season. <laughs> episode four, season just in one. case you were wondering. Do do. Uh, Captain Thule. 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 Okay, that kind of changes his attitude. He's like, "Yes, that's right, Captain Lin Thule." It's all mm. one word, actually. Mm. I thought Thule was like a last name. Nope, oh, it's uh, it's all one word. Uh, can I incite his reaction to like if he believes us? But how does, what does I mean, that you don't need to roll. He does now. Like, but, he, but that's not about I, more cases. It's like now he believes us. What does that change in his opinion? Like, are we ah, now a threat? I are see. we now a? Uh... Okay. Yes. Roll initiative. Uh, okay. <laughs> roll, roll, <laughs> so, roll, so we're going so, for it. Okay. No, I said the wrong. You, you just see yeah. a lightning bolt come out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, Seventeen. Okay. Seventeen. I will give you the answer when we next convene. Okay. Bow, 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 bow. Mm -hmm. Which is in five weeks. minutes. Yeah, who's out next week? I am. I'm out, sure. I'm out next week. Let me just check because I've got to fly to Perth the week after that. Let's mm -hmm. check what time my flight is. I think I made an afternoon flight. I'll just double check. Let's do outros while James is doing that because we got to get him right. out, of, out of time. So, so my flight to Perth leaves twenty five minutes after the show ends. So I, I, I could do it from the lounge potentially, or we do a short. No, sure James, <laughs> we're not fucking gleaming an episode from a goddamn aircraft. <laughs> I've done rat in a car. I've so done gleaming an aircraft. We're not doing it again. Both shows were a disaster. I'll just hire. I'll just hire one of the rooms in the business lounge, like one of the, one of like the the meeting rooms. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's such a ridiculous expense for this. No. So the twenty first. The twenty first is the next time we're meeting. Jeez, that's a while. Wow. Okay. It's gonna be a long time before you find out how this guy feels, <laughs> or how I learned how to magic slay, <clears throat> mage slay, whatever. That I mean, was you called. gotta level up and be able to take a feat, right? Yeah, but at least I'll have read the book by then, hopefully. Generic fantasy adventure, the 21st.
Oh. We're breaking everybody's heart at home. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> sorry, Lisa. The great news is, is that the day before that is when I'm doing the first episode of my new D&D 5e campaign, Tabadachi in Another World. It's a once a month VTuber game. I feel like that solidly covers all I have for my outro. James, I think, I think we'll, we'll, we'll stay your favorite D&D group there, won't we? I'm going to wait until I've had a session with them before I make any decisions. But second off, I just want to say, James, is that my normal answer to that question is, is that I, all my D&D groups are all like my children. I love them all differently and uniquely. But the real answer is, is that I love Shipbreakers more than all of my other children. As, as a parent, I can tell you that's bullshit, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's really happening is I say that you're all equal, that I lead into the Shipbreakers group, and I say, but it's really you guys. <laughs> you, get, you always give them more food on their plate at dinner than everybody else. But you asked me who's my favorite D&D &D group, so I'd say mm. let me wait until I have one session with them before I make that call. Well, no, no, we're, 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 it's, it's us yeah. right now, because, you know, like, like right now. Right now, oh, yeah, right now it's you guys, because you're the oh, only D&D yeah, &D group sure. I have. Find out which uh, which is AP's favorite on the twenty first. Right. <laughs> Cast of fractal, actually. <laughs> James, what do you got for an outro? Ah, uh, nothing. I just uh, uh, watch check check out Blood Bowl on Arthur's. Um, uh, it's Discord on your well. channel. We, we, Don't it's, say it's, it's on, on my. It's on my, it's on my YouTube. Your Discord. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll be back for Pendragon next week as well. My God, imagine having Pendragon. Imagine. I imagine well, dragons. Be something. Ah. Well, anyone else got an outro that they need to throw down? Um, I will be older for our next show. Wow. I'm not looking for Happy, happy birthday. birthday. That's technically true at any given moment, but happy birthday. Specifically, specifically government identification wise. Um, yeah. Of course. Um, Can you start drinking now? <laughs> we already did. James, oh, 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 James. James, this you can tell this guy got married. Day Look at that Riz. <laughs> <laughs> What's it say? What's that say on your sheet? 18 charisma, James? Sheesh. <laughs> Until then it'll my life is basically sword, swords, and more swords. Of course, of course. Oh, Andrew, I understand that. You are going to be on a show with James and Radosaurus, a new Battletech show called Blades of Honor. Am I? I'm not telling. Well, I already told well, you everybody. Just I made a yeah. trailer. <laughs> and I, I mentioned it in today's Patreon meeting. But yeah, you could be kind of, you know. Yeah, you could, you could yeah. wipe out other on, on his own show. <laughs> <laughs> you can't wait for me on my own show. That's my power. <laughs> maybe maybe it's waiting up for the first session you don't know yet oh my god we'll yeah no i'm looking forward to the new show and reveal that andrew's not really on the show it was all a prank It'd be the worst prank i ever pulled <laughs> you got anything else going on uh no not really just waiting for the new show to drop for us to get started on that okay uh bearded uh, Bearded Jalapeno, Twitch, uh, stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, so that's where I'll be drawing or playing video games. So catch me out there. Guys, we got to get Grimdark James to an airport. So let me just say mm -hmm. this. Have a good time zone. Mm -hmm.